Prepared. Good evening, Warren, Ohio, and welcome to the 2022 high school football season, the home opener for our Harding Raiders at Mollenkopf Stadium. Tonight, your Raiders play host to the Akron Booktool Griffins. Harding coming off an opening season loss to Medina, 33-10, looking to get back on the winning side. Tom Bird on hand with you. It's always my pleasure to be here. It's even a greater pleasure to be here with my good friend, Eddie Colbert. Eddie, how you doing? Good, Tom. Always great to be back opening up the uh, 2023 season, excuse me, 2022 season here at Molenkopf Stadium. Always have good, nice to have football in the air. Raiders looking to bounce back after that loss last week to Medina. Great game up until about, you know, midway into the third quarter. Raiders were able to stay in with a very, very athletic Medina team. This week, they're going to just have to finish. You know, they have a young team on defense specifically. I looked at the uh, rosters here, but uh, Bucknell's got a couple big receivers, 6'2", 6'4". We know that we're coming in with some young secondary guys, sophomores out there. Tonight, it's going to be up to those guys up front in that 3-3-5 defense to put a lot of pressure on the, uh, on the quarterback, make them get rid of that ball early to help those uh, young DBs out. And as far as on offense, it uh, really... Everything centers around Dallas Jet, hopefully giving him time to get back, get the ball out of his hands, and give him some lanes to run in. Yeah, absolutely. Last year, Dallas Jet had an outstanding year number-wise. Uh, almost broke almost every uh, record that you would look at it from the standpoint of a quarterback here at Harding. But he doesn't have those two horses out there. He doesn't have Tyreek Ivory, and he doesn't have Dom Foster. So it's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, that play calling, being able to get him into the open area, be able to use his athleticism, uh, pressure that line of scrimmage, make those safeties, those outside linebackers make decisions so he can make those easy 10, 15-yard passes and let his athletes do the rest of the work for him. Bookdale also coming off an opening season loss, North Canton Hoover. Um, 35 to 21, I believe that final score was. And they're going to be looking to get on the winning side, too. Both teams itching for that first win in 2022. Yeah, we're early in the year here. You know, both teams, as you mentioned, coming off of losses. Nobody likes to start out like that. You know, you get through the summer, all, all summer practice. All you're talking about is that first game, preparing for that first game. You want to come out and you want to really send a message, not only to the other team and the rest of the, the, the league, but you also for your own self, that self-confidence. Both of them ended up on the short end of the stick last week. Both of them are going to be fighting hard, don't want to start out 0-2, uh, put themselves in a hole. So we really look for the Raiders to come out hot, come out hard and just really start as I say every year establish the line of scrimmage you establish that line of scrimmage and that opens up the playbook for you looks like Akron Bookdale has concluded their pregame warm-up so Eddie and I are going to take a little break here and let you enjoy the pregame show Raider marching band pregame coming up and we'll be back with kickoff in about 10-15 minutes stay tuned Raider Nation
Hope you enjoyed the uh, Raider Marching Band pregame show. And now, folks, it is time for football. Just about set for kickoff here. The fireworks have been shot off. We've had the national anthem. Teams are ready to take the field and get this game underway.
Raiders will be kicking off. They'll be heading towards the south end of the field. Number 12, Jake Doherty. And it seems like he's been around forever, but he's still just a junior, and he's going to be one of the main pieces of this Raider team this year. Yeah, we talked about as a freshman when he came on. Uh, you know, as a freshman, he was very consistent. Uh, we talk about the, you know, what that means to be able to get three points instead of punting the ball or going for it on fourth down. As Jake becomes a junior here, going to be more expected out of him. We expect big things from him. And there's your opening kickoff. It's a short kick. That's going to be fielded about the eight-yard line. Griffin, return man, turns the corner, gets it out to the 28-yard line. So, Tom, the Raiders are going to come out on defense first. You're going to see this 3-3-5 defense that they've been playing. Uh, it's going to be a fast, athletic defense. We've talked about... Uh, the corners, we know that this is going to be a, a, a young defensive team here. Defensive backfield's got a lot of sophomores back there. They're going to have tough matchups with uh, number three, Marcel Boyce, as well as Dakota Taylor, 6'4", 6'2". Going to look for those guys up front to put some pressure on the quarterback, make them make some bad decisions, help that deep, help those, uh, cor those young corners out to start the year out. That was number nine, Elijah Williams on that kickoff return. Starting quarterback for the Griffins, number 11, Stevie Diamond, a six foot two, 205 pound sophomore, brings his offense out in the field. He'll set up the shotgun with two receivers right, two receivers left, and he's going to look to throw right off the bat on first down. He's going deep down the middle, looking for number three. That was Marcel Boyce Jr., the big receiver. Pass a little bit underthrown. It's going to be second down and 10, Akron Buchtel. Raiders come out in a four man front to start the game there. Kids you want to keep your eye on was in coverage there. Uh, Aris Coleman Bay. Aris Coleman Bay may be a sophomore, but I can tell you, you are not going to find a harder working kid on this field. He puts in the work during season. He puts in the work uh, on the off season. We'll see how it's going to pay off for him tonight. Second down and 10 for the Griffins at their own 28-yard line. First possession of the game. Stevie Diamond getting his signals from the sideline. Now they're ready to go. As you take a look up front, you don't see a lot of size up front on the defensive line. It's going to take that a lot of athleticism and technique to be able to put some pressure on the quarterback. Wiley cheers. The lone running back set up behind Diamond. And this time the give is to cheers, and he gets nothing, maybe a yard. Looks like he got out to the 29-yard line. It's going to be third and long right out of the bat for the Akrabukto Griffins, third and nine. Nice play up front there, using that athleticism, swim move, being able to get him past that guy in front of him, fighting off, shedding that blocker to be able to make the tackle. Looks like maybe for a one yard gain, gonna bring up a third and long. Diamond all by himself in the back, backfield right now. He's got five receivers in this formation. It's third down and nine. Straight drop back, looking downfield. That ball is overthrown. It's going to be fourth down and nine, and the Raiders force a three and out right off the bat. Exactly how the Raiders wanted to get started there, Tom. Brought a little pressure there from the left-hand side. Made the quarterback release the ball a little quicker. Maybe even uh, caught his arm a little bit, forced that overthrow there. Nice three and out for the Raiders to be able to start. Should end up with pretty good field position for the offense. And Dallas Chet looks like he's going to be doing a lot more this year. He's back to receive this punt. We'll see him at quarterback in a couple seconds. Low snap. This punt is, and Dallas just going to field this one. And he's going to bring it out to about the 46-yard line. So the Raiders are going to have excellent field position to begin their first offensive possession of the ball game. Yeah, we talked about earlier in the in the pregame, Dallas Jet last year, numbers-wise, uh, almost set every Raider record for passing. Had two horses out uh, there for him with uh, Tyreek Ivory and uh, and a uh, um, Dom Foster, who've obviously graduated and moved on. So they're going to have to open up the offense, looking for a lot from Ryan Powell. Always want to try to establish that running game. That starts with establishing the line of scrimmage. Once you can do that, that opens up everything. But Dallas Jett is a player, and Dallas Jett is an athlete. I expect him to lead this team out there. Everything is going to run through him. This team will go, and this offense will go as he does. 
Dallas Jet sets up. He is flanked by Devin Boss and the big Ryan Powell to his right. And this is going to be a gift to Boss around the end. Boss has a little bit of room. Boss to the 50. Boss to the 45. Boss all the way down to the Akron book to 40-yard line. First and 10 Raiders. Getting out to the edge there. You always teach the defense. You got to seal the edge. Got to contain that edge. Uh, Booknell not able to do that. Harding was able to take advantage of that with a nice gain on first down. See on the replay, those linemen being able to not just hit that initial block, but after you hit the initial block, get to that second level, that's what springs those long runs. My mistake on that, that was number five, Javante Jones on that big run. Javante Jones with that run. Boss is out in the slot on the left. First to 10 at the book to 40 yard line. This give us to Ryan Powell, and Powell's got some running room through that defensive line all the way down to the 25. There's a flag on the play. I see, a, I see a couple things down. I don't know, are, are those flags or? I see two orange markers down there, but I'm not. They don't look like flags, do they? No, I'm not sure. It looks like the, you know what? Those are the those are the sandbags they throw out for the fumbles. Look okay. like they just must have fell out of the, uh, or the referee's pockets. But nevertheless, another great gain there by, uh, by Powell. Offensive line opening up the holes there, getting to that second level, able to create these long runs. Ryan Powell, the six foot one, 215 pound junior with a big gain down to the 26 yard line and Harding is on the move early. Jet in the backfield, he has got Javante Jones. He is right, Jet's gonna keep this one. Look for room around that right end. He's gonna get inside up to about the 20 yard line with that good yardage on that first down play for Dallas Jet. Dallas Jet, we talked about his arm and uh, you know his ability to pass, but he's also got the ability, and he's a smart run. He's a smart quarterback. He is not afraid to wait in that pocket for somebody to get open, but he knows when to tuck the ball and get the yards that he needs. Another nice six-yard gain there as the Raiders are on a nice drive here to open up the first quarter. Six-yard gain down to the Buchtel 20-yard line. It's going to be second down and four. Ryan Powell lines up behind Dallas Jet this time. That's Boss in motion, moving to his left. And there's the give up the middle, Ryan Powell. Powell's got some room again. Powell powers through for a first down inside the 15 yard line, down to about the book to 13. Tom, I don't know if we'll get a replay on this, but I think your, your center and your right guard there just opened up a freeway lane of uh, uh, running room for Powell there to get that first down inside the, uh, inside the 15 yard line. First and 10, Harding at the Akron Buchtel 13-yard line. And Harding has put everything on the ground so far, and Buchtel has yet to find an answer for that. Powell once again right behind Dallas Jet. And again, the give us to Powell. This time he's in the backfield, but he gets through, still manages to pick up a yard. That could have been a two or three yard loss, but Powell kept his legs moving, picks up a yard, second down and nine. The running game has looked strong thus far. Offensive line is clicking on all cylinders. I wouldn't even think about passing. I would impose, impose your strength on this offensive line right from the beginning. Powell again behind Dallas Jet. Two receivers left. The lone man, number four, Chris Provitt down here to the right. Jet with a bootleg, looking, Got looking him. into the end zone. Got him. Oh, a oh. little bit behind. He was looking, looks like he was looking for Brian Powell down there, number three. That pass was just a little bit behind him. That's going to bring up a third down and nine from the Buchtel 12-yard line. Dallas probably got rid of that ball a little bit late. He had a couple receivers open early. Uh, obviously, Booknell is knowing that they're getting gashed on the runs. They're thinking runs, that nice play action, setting up that bootleg to the outside. Uh, nice receivers right in front of him. Might have wanted to check that down. He had a receiver about five yards in front of him. Probably could have hit him, let him, let him do the rest of the work. But third and nine, uh, we'll see what they call here. You're looking for a passing down. Powell again fakes a handoff to Powell. He's got a man in a corner and just overthrows him a little bit. I believe he was looking for Devin Boss over there in the corner. That's going to bring up fourth down and nine. And we talked about it earlier. Here comes Jake Doherty to try to put the Raiders on the board early with a field goal. 
Yeah, this is, you know, we've talked about this since his freshman year. They've got a lot of confidence in Jake. Had confidence in him since he was a freshman. He's comfortable in this position. Uh, need him to come through here and put three on the board. This appears to be about a 29-yard field goal attempt. And now we have a flag. That looks like it's going to be a procedure call against the Rainers. They're going to back that field goal unit up five yards, make it a 34-yard attempt for Jake. You know, probably tried to catch Booknell there on a hard count. Unfortunately, it looks like it backfired. It's going to push us back five yards. 7.35 remaining in this first quarter, scoreless to this point. Raiders setting up for a 35-yard field goal. They're going to set that marker down at the 25. That kick is up. And it is no good. Wide to the left. Doherty misses a little bit wide to the left, and the defense will take over. Bookdell's going to take over on their own 25, or about the 18-yard uh, line, I should say, where the ball was snapped from, 18-yard line. That, I can't deny it's a disappointment there. The, the, the Raiders' uh, offense looked great coming down the stretch there, uh, clicking on all cylinders, offensive line opening up the holes. Unfortunately, got themselves into that third and nine. I, I think he had a receiver open on that, but he was, would have been short of the first down, so he tried for the end zone, couldn't get it. That five-yard penalty seems to have loomed uh, uh, to the detriment of the Raiders on that. We'll see how they can rebound. Stevie Diamond, number 11, the quarterback for the Griffins. Sends a man in motion. There's a hand up, uh, handoff up the middle, out to about the 25, 26, 27 yard line. Handoff to number 21, Wiley Cheers. It's gonna bring up a second down and short. Looks like about a second down and four coming up for Buchtel. Nice gain to the outside for Buchtel. Looks like that defensive end might have been held. The referee missed it. Let's call that second down and three after a seven yard pickup by Mr. Cheers who lines up again behind Stevie Diamond. And Cheers gets the ball again. This time he's in the backfield and he's going to drop a couple. Nazir Coleman slashing in there. We talked about they might be young, but they are athletic. Being able to get in there, disrupt some things in the backfield for a loss. Two-yard loss makes it third down and five. And this time, Diamond drops straight back. He's under a lot of pressure, and Stevie Diamond is going to go down back at the 15-yard line. There are flags down, but that's usually in the area of holding. That was absolutely holding. It looks like uh, Coleman came off that right end. He would have got to him first if it weren't for the hold by the left tackle. And the Raiders are going to decline that penalty. The sack takes the ball all the way back to the 15-yard line and brings up a fourth down at 15, and the putting unit for Akron Buchtel takes the field. Another great defensive stand for the Raiders. Really like to see that. You didn't know how the team, this young team would react after having that great drive get stalled and then with the missed field goal at the end, coming out with nothing. Great to see that defense coming out with their ears pinned back, getting after the running backs and the quarterback, putting them in a fourth and long position, should have excellent field position. Dallas Jet sets up. It is a short high kick. I don't think this one's going to be fielded and it's going to bounce out of bounds and the Raiders are going to take over first down and 10 with a very short field at the Akron Buchtel 32 yard line. Another opportunity, great field position. You know, a couple yards. Uh, they're already going to be in field goal range for Jake. Uh, just really looking to capitalize. Want to jump on a team, especially in the beginning of the year. You want to jump on them from the start. You, you really want to just put them away, let them know that there's no chance here, establish that running game as they have, beat them down physically, beat them down mentally, and as you do that, you will see the game just start to get easier and easier. But it all starts with those front five establishing a tone of this game. 
5.44 left to play in the opening quarter here at Mullenkopf. <laughs> First to 10 Raiders at the Bookdale 32 yard line. Ryan Powell in the backfield alongside Dallas Jett. Dallas Jett's going to keep this one. Jett's got some room. Jett to the 20, inside the 20 to 15, still working ahead, down to about the 12 yard line. Big run for Dallas Jett on first down. Dallas Jett proven he can't just do it with his arm, he can do it with his legs as well, as, as shown on that play there. It is a, it's a nice combination though. You've got Dallas Jett there in the backfield, you know, able to run the ball, obviously proves that he can pass the ball, but Ryan Powell, big body back. He's gonna be able to take 20, 25 carries a game, and he's gonna be able to take those hits and keep on going. First and 10 at the Bookdale 17 yard line. And this time the give is to Powell up the middle. Powell moving the pile all the way down to the 10 yard line. Looks like they're gonna make it the 11. Bring up a second down and four. Again, the Raiders deep inside Akron Bookdale Griffin territory. Really like the effort on that run. I mean, he probably got first contact roughly around the line of scrimmage, was still able to muscle forward for another six yards and always falling forward for those extra yards. Raiders with their second opportunity of the evening, deep down in Bookdale territory. Last time they were down here, they stalled out. Field goal was a little bit wide left, plenty of leg on it, just wide. And again, Ryan Powell sets up behind Dallas Jett, two receivers to the left. The give is to Powell, Powell bounces it outside to the right. Powell has got He's nothing got in it. front He's of him. He's got it. He's got it. Touchdown Raiders! Ryan Powell on the 12 yard run around the right end. Coach Arnold, slim down the playbook. Forget about the pass. Let's impose our will on this defense as they did the first time. Able to sustain that drive, get in for six. Jake Doherty on to attempt the extra point with 4.15 to play in the first quarter. And a little bit uh, shaky on the snap there. The holder couldn't quite get it set in time for Jake. So that, that kick's going to be no good. The Raiders are going to stand on a 6 to nothing lead with 4.15 to play in the first quarter. Remember that play there. Remember that missed field goal. That's four points right there. You know, the biggest thing in these games is, you know, you got to finish. And, you know, those four points, those four points could be big. So it's going to be up to this defense, this offense. We always talk about three parts of the game, offense, defense, special teams. You know, last year the Raiders were hindered by playing good teams that had kickers that could put the ball in the end zone. Now remember, in high school, once that ball gets to the end zone, it cannot be returned. That took two of our biggest offensive weapons out of the game by doing that. Special teams played a huge part in that turnaround last year for them to be able to make the playoffs. We'll see how, the how, how we can play in that third realm of the game. Right now, down four points with our special teams. Definitely got to fix that next week. Jake Dory set to kick off. Trevante Fletcher, number six, is back there along with number nine, Elijah Williams. And it looks like it's going to be Elijah Williams again. And Williams bobbles the ball back into the end zone. A much deeper kick this time by Jake Doherty. Williams had to, had his hands on it about the six yard line ball, but it goes in the end zone. The Griffins are going to have to settle for a touchback and start at their own 20. Defense been on fire this th thus far. 11 hats to the ball, everybody flying around. See a lot of athleticism out there to make up for the lack of size that they have. Let's see if we can get another three and out, get the offense back on the field. I like to see that touchback coming on, on our side for a change here. I know last year, another thing that kind of hurt us 
was uh, kickoff return coverage. We we dropped a couple games and well, you late remember, late deep re returns really you remember hurt. Remember that Ursland game? Ursland I mean, game. that that was the big one that hurt. Playoff game against Fitch. A late return set yeah. Fitch up with a short field, just a few minutes to play. Stevie Diamond with cheers at his left. Diamond's going to quick toss out to the flat. He is met hard at the 25-yard line. That looked like that was Dallas Jet out there, the quarterback coming up and showing his defensive prowess there. He ain't afraid to hit you. That's a two-yard gain, second down and eight. You can see this on the replay. He reads it, times it up, and just and lays the shoulder to him. Absolutely textbook right there. And this time, the fake to chairs. He gets his man over the middle this time. That was number three, Marcel Boyce Jr., the big six foot two wide receiver. And that's going to be the Griffin's first, first down of the evening. Gets the ball out to the about the 37 yard line. You can see Bookman going into this hurry up offense here, trying to catch them in a switch here. As you see some guys coming off the field, expecting them fully to try to take advantage of that, the height they have in the wide receivers. That time with that quick slant, it worked out. And another quick hitter over the middle. This one goes to number 18, Xavier Wilson. Another big receiver for Bookdill. Six foot two, 210 sophomore for Bookdill with that receiver, that reception. First down out to the now in Raider territory at the 49 yard line. Bookdill and Diamond starting to find themselves in a little rhythm here. We'll see uh, what the defense does here to kind of confuse them. Maybe start dropping a couple guys back uh, into those lanes, knock down or pick off one of those quick slants. Bookdill's got three receivers at the top there. One man down front on this side. That trips to the high side. Safety shifts over. And we have a flag on that play. Bookdill taking a little bit too much time getting their pieces set out there. That's going to back them up five yards. You know, Tom, later we'll, in the game, maybe we'll get an opportunity to talk about all the great things that are happening here at Warren, uh, at, at, at Warren Harding, uh, specifically, uh, you know, the buildings that are going up back here. But one of the things that that's caused is they had to take down the time, the, the play clock from the far end of the field. So therefore, they had to take it off at the other end of the field. Quarterbacks are used to being able to see that. Got to have that clock in your head. First down and 15 for the Griffins, backed up to their own 46-yard line. High snap, and they hand off up the middle. Fighting back to the original line of scrimmage. Wiley cheers back in the game, gets that, gets five yards back to the original line of scrimmage, making it second down and 10 for the Griffins. Cheers did a great job avoiding that first tackle, able to get back to that original line of scrimmage. But what I really like to see there is that defense just flying around. You just saw nobody standing still, nobody on their heels, everybody moving towards the ball. Second down and 10, and Diamond drops straight back. He's holding. Coaches, you're going to hear him yelling. The left end is having a real problem with Coleman out there. That's probably the third play that I've seen where it seemed that it was obvious holding, but the, the, the officials missed it. No harm, no foul, though. It's going to bring up a third and 10. Continue to watch that matchup here to the near side of the screen. Their left tackle versus our right end. Stevie Diamond in the backfield all by himself on this third down and 10 play. Draws back, looking out to the side there. That ball is caught, and that was Marcel Boyce. He's still on his feet. He's going to get the first down, down to about the Raider, almost the Raider 30-yard line. And again, Griffin starting to take advantage of those big, tall wideouts that they have. Yeah, we talked about it before the game. Um, you know, you could, you could have, uh, it doesn't matter what grade they're in. These are some big guys out there. You're talking 6'2", six, 6'4", six, both of them over 200 pounds. And a third winner, Xavier Wilson, also 6'2", 210, just a sophomore. First and 10, Griffins, 20, 31 yard line rather. 
There's the gift of chairs up the middle. He gets it up to about the 30 to 27 yard line. Game about four. Brings up a second down and six for Akron Buchtel. Clock running down here in the first quarter. 40 seconds left to play. Buchtel trying to get back in. This get themselves on the board. It's a six to nothing Warren Harding Raider lead at this point. Let's see how the defense reacts here. This is the longest drive, the most plays that this offense has ran against the defense. Let's see where the conditioning comes in at. Diamond back to pass. He's hit as he throws it. And another big hit over there. That looked like Devin Boss this time, right there about the same time the ball was. Talked about it before, this defense, they fly around out there. A lot of athletes out there, a lot of speed. Getting to the ball, able to converge quick, make up a lot of ground to stop them in their tracks. And that big defensive play is going to take us to the end of the first quarter. Your first quarter lead, Harding Raiders six to nothing over the Akron Buchtel Griffins, but the Griffins are driving. They do have a third down and six coming up to open up the second quarter. Well, we have a second here. Give a shout out to the uh, freshman team. They were in Akron Buckle yesterday. Came away with the W, ended up tying Medina in their first game of the year. And I believe the uh, eighth grade and seventh grade played on Wednesday. The seventh grade, I believe, came up with the W. Eighth grade, they ended up in a tie as well. So good luck to all the underclassmen in their years. Waiting for their day to get up here on Friday nights under these lights. Second quarter opens up. Buchtel at the Harding 27 yard line with a third down and six. After a big defensive play there by Devin Boss on that last reception. Diamond in the backfield. Quarterback. There's some motion there on the right guard, right tackle, and they caught it. That's going to back Buchtel up five more yards. Those penalties like that, they're just drive killers. Justin Hill, the running back, in for Buchtel at this point, giving Wally Cheers a breather. Justin Hill, a 5'11", 190-pound junior. He sets up to Stevie Diamond's left. Makes it third down and 10. Diamond drops back to pass, looking down that left sideline. That ball's almost picked off by the Raiders. Excellent coverage there. We're looking was, for a number. I think that was, I think that might have been Dallas Jet again over there. Might have been Dallas Jet. Great coverage. Quarterback recognized that single coverage, threw up that 50 50 ball. Dallas Jet had an excellent opportunity for the interception. Able to knock it down. Gonna bring up that fourth and 11. I don't think they got a field goal kicker that can do this, so it's gonna force Booknell to go for it here on fourth and long. And Buchtel is going to use a timeout, and they're going to talk this one over. Their first timeout of the half here with a facing a fourth and 11 at the Raider 32-yard line. Second quarter just underway. We've had one play. There's 11.54 to go. Harding on top early, six to nothing. You know, I'll tell you, Tom, it's... Uh... It's, it's great to great to see this uh, this defense, how they're performing tonight. You know, the first two drives, three and outs. This one here, a bend, don't break uh, 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 type of series where they've got them to the fourth and 11. But that 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 uh, that that false start penalty, that looms huge for Bucknell right now. Instead of having it be a, a fourth and uh, six, they're with the fourth and 11. Defense knows they have to throw the ball right here. So you're going to see them with their ears pinned back. I expect to see them send several players from several different directions, making that quarterback. No, it looks and like Buchtel's they are going to line up. They are going to line up for a field goal. This, field going goal. To be a, this will be a 48-yard attempt. I'm looking for, for a Akron quick kick Buchtel. here. Looking for a quick kick. I'll try to get a number on this kicker. He gets a lot of leg into that ball. 
And he winds up just a little short. Came up just short there. No harm, no foul for the defense. They're gonna get the ball at where the ball was placed for the kick. Gonna give Harding pretty good field position. That was number 32, Demetrian Duval, with that 48-yard attempt for the Akron Bookdale Griffins. Yeah, real surprised that they would try that there. I thought for sure when I saw him go into that, it was going to be a direct snap right to the kicker, and he was going to try to pooch it, you know, somewhere inside the 10. But coach, coach knows more than we do. Had a little more faith in his kicker. Came up a couple yards short there. Worked out for the Raiders. And Dallas Chet, after a couple of stellar defensive plays, leads his offense back out on the field. It'll be first down and 10, Raiders at the 20 yard line. Ryan Powell sets up to Jets left. Jets gonna drop back. Got He's him. looking deep downfield. And there's a lot of hands on that Ryan. play and no flag. As soon as he got past him, he saw him grab his jersey. Ref wasn't in a position to call it. Like Dallas identified that one-on-one -on -one coverage. Puts it up. I don't know if we're going to catch it here as he grabs the jersey to pull him back. That pass was intended for Raylan Weaver, number 20 for the Raiders. A lot of contact on that play, so... Apparently the officials are letting them go tonight. We'll see how this plays out as the game wears on. Second down and 10 for the Raiders. 11.40 to play in the second quarter. And this time the Dallas Jet keeps it. Jet bounces outside. Jet with a big game. Jet all the way out to the 40 yard line. First and 10 Harding. Another nice run for Jet. You saw that open field vision there. Made a couple guys miss. Be able to get upfield. It's early in the year. The one thing we want to watch for, though, is we know is that, that, that the temperature's up right now, making sure everybody's hydrated. You know, generally during the beginning of the year, you see three or four on each side going down with those cramps. When you see those runs like that, it just kind of reminds you, keep these guys hydrated, keep them in the game. Dallas Jet with a 21-yard scamper out to the 41-yard line. It's first and 10 Harding, and the Raiders are on the move again. Powell sets up behind Jet, and this time they give us a Powell. Powell picking his way through the middle. And he's going to move the pile ahead for a nice gain on first down. That's about five yards. Brings up a second down and five at the 46-yard line. Can't break every one of them. Like how Powell right there showed some maturity, took what the defense was giving him, kind of put his hand on the back of his lineman and just rode him forward for a nice six-yard gain. Too many times you'll see a young running back try to kick that to the outside. Everybody thinks that you could just beat him. You can beat him to the outside. Really like the discipline that he showed there, getting the ball north and south. Powell remains in the backfield with Dallas Jet. And there's the delay give to Powell again up the middle. Powell's going to move ahead. He's going to move the pile ahead for a first down. He's in the Griffin territory at their 48 yard line. Looks like we do have a penalty on the flat. Yeah, there's a flag over there near that far sideline. Illegal formation, false start. And a procedure call goes against the Raiders. That's going to negate that first, first down run for Ryan Powell. The young man is always going forward though, Eddie. Oh, always moving forward, always falling forward for that extra yard. That's going to bring up a second down and 10 for the Raiders. That, ball, that call moves the ball back to uh, the 41 yard line where they started this series from. Jet again to Ryan Powell and Powell Pulls ahead for about three yards this time out to the 44 yard line. It's going to bring up a third down and seven. Obviously, they have a concept as they're starting this game, and that is just to wear down that defense. Wear them down with Ryan Powell's size. Wear them down 
with Dallas Jets legs. Uh, occasionally taking those shots out there, keeping the defense honest. Looks like Harding's gonna take its first time out. Raiders gonna talk about this third down and seven play. They looked look a little confused. They were trying to set up their formation out there. So Coach Arnold's gonna talk this one over, make sure everybody's in the right spot, know what they're doing, try and get this first down and keep this uh, keep this drive going. Yeah, this is this is a critical drive right here. I mean, you're only up six nothing right now. Uh, you know, Bookville did show a little life on offense on the last series there with a pretty decent drive, resulted in no points with a 48-yard field goal attempt. But you, you want to you get another score here. You want to really just establish your dominance here in this first half, get a couple more scores up on the board, start getting this offense in a nice rhythm. The Raiders have, they've moved the ball and almost at will on the ground. Just got to get in the end zone. Yeah, you know, and, and obviously Bucknell knows that, you know, we, we're, we're establishing that run right now. And so they're starting to stack the box. They're starting to send some guys up the middle. Wouldn't hurt to see some of those bootlegs. Get Dallas Jet out there on the corner. Force those uh, safeties and those corners to make decisions. And it gives them that nice little 10, 15-yard dump-off pass. Let these athletes do the rest of the work for you. The Raiders send three receivers to the right side. There's one lone receiver down here on the near side. Ryan Powell in the backfield. He sets up to Dallas Jets right. Dallas going to roll out to the right. Looking downfield, he's going to tuck this one in and run. And Dallas Jets going to pick up the first down. Gets it over to the Griffin 48-yard line. Nice uh, eight-yard carry there for Dallas Jet to get the first down. That's exactly what I was talking about on the play before. Get him out on the edges there. Make that defense make decisions. They went with the receivers. He made the smart choice, tucked it, got upfield for the first down. Just under nine minutes to play in the first half. Raiders at the Griffin 48-yard line. It's number 14, Najee Jones coming down here on this side. Jet with the keeper up the middle, spin move, picks up a few, still on his feet. Picks up about four or five there, so looked like he was going to be stacked up the line of scrimmage and still makes some good yard. Just going to bring up a second down of five, gets it down to about the 43-yard uh, line of Akron Buchtel. A uh, great run there by Jet, bringing up that second and five. Really opens up the playbook right here. You want to take a shot, here's the chance to do it. Second and five, playbook's wide open. You want to take that shot deep downfield. Keep those safeties and corners on as this is the time to do it. Jones again down on this side of the field. Powell remains behind Dallas Jet. And this time the give is to Powell. Powell bounces it outside, keeps the legs moving, and Powell is going to move that pile past the first down marker and pick up another first and 10 for the Raiders. He just keeps driving and driving and driving. Look, those are the type of runs there. Not only, not only do they destroy the morale of the defense, but that gets, your, that gets your offensive line going. They know that they're up there busting their butts for something. They know that they're gonna, you're, they're, your running back's going to put in just as much work as you are up front. Every time a lineman sees something like that, that makes them want to work harder for you. Powell comes over to the sideline for a breather. First and 10 Raiders, 35 yard line, the book to Griffins. There's the give to, looks like Javante Jones again. He's gonna take a loss, big hit over there on that far sideline. About a two yard loss for the Raiders. Bring up a second down and 11 or 12. Looks like second down and 12. Yeah, great job by the left defensive end there of Bucknell. That's exactly how they teach it. String them out. You don't let anybody get outside of you. Use that sideline as the 12th player. String them out for no gain or, as you see here, a loss of two. Second down and 12. We're under seven minutes to go in the first half. 
Jones remains in the game in the backfield alongside Dallas Jett. Jett looking to his left. He's got the pass complete. Complete to Chris Provitt. And that's going to be another Raider first down. Gets it out just beyond the marker. That takes it down to the Griffin 25-yard line. You can see that from the line of scrimmage. Probit lined up here to the near side. Looked like he had safety coverage about 10, 12 yards off of him. Safety started to backpedal. He noticed it, stopped his route, turned on a quick hook. Dallas, with that strong arm, was able to deliver it to him in time. Let him catch the ball with some room to run. Javante Jones had that big run early in the game. He's on the sidelines trying to shake a little something off. Hopefully we'll see him back. Ryan Powell steps back in at the running back position. Looks like, looks like they're gonna stretch him out. Looks like the cramps are hitting Mr. Jones down here. Oh. And there's a end around attempt by Ariz Coleman Bay, but that goes nowhere. Looks to be about a six yard loss. That's gonna set up a second down and long for the Raiders. Talked about Aris before the game. I had the pleasure of coaching him when he was uh, with the Little Raiders. I'll say it again, you're not gonna find a, a, a harder worker. Uh, it, it, you see him, his dad puts the videos up on Facebook of him just out there off season, just putting in the work and, 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 and past being a great athlete, you're not gonna find a better kid. Great kid, great family, exactly uh, what we wanna produce here at uh, Warren City Schools. Officials had the progress stopped at the 28 yard line. So it's only a three yard loss, but it's second down and 13. Fakes the hand off the pile. Jet looking for some room. He's got a man over the middle. That pass is complete. That's close to a first down. Going to be a little bit short. That's Devin Boss with the reception down there. And it is enough for a first down. Takes it down to the 15 yard line. First to 10 Raiders. You saw uh, Booknell look like they came out in a zone there. Boss found that soft spot set up in it. Dallas Jet identified him through the strong pass in there. Move the sticks. You're going to have first down here inside the 20-yard uh, line. Boss and Jones split out to the right. You've got uh, Chris Provitt down here to the left and Ryan Powell set up right behind Dallas Jet. And this time they give us to Powell. Powell up the middle. Drives a pile ahead. There's a flag on the play as Powell picks up about three. See what this flag is. Could have been a possible face mask. And I think that's what the initial signal is. Oh, offsides. Or is he just standing like that? Yep, face mask, yep. That yep. should move the ball half the distance to the goal from there. Yeah, you saw that flag come in late. Knew it, was, knew it was too late for a possible holding call. A lot of times when you're aggressive out there trying to make that tackle, when you feel that plastic, you got to let it go. That's going to move the ball down to the Griffin seven-yard line where it'll be second down and two. Under five minutes to go in this first half. Jet's going to keep this one. Reverses his field. Trying to make something happen. Gets it down to about the four-yard line. That's enough for a first down. First and goal, Raiders inside the five. Offense looking good right here, but I'll tell you the other thing it does. Sometimes your offense can be your best defense. This drive started, I think, with about 9.09 .09 on the clock. They've taken almost five minutes off the clock here. Got it, got it under five minutes. They can get this score in here and hold them, go into halftime, get the ball back, be able to score again, get a nice comfortable lead, start to work on, uh, start to work on some of the uh, fundamentals. Boss splits out by himself, wide right. There's the gift to Powell up the middle. He'll get another couple yards, but he's going to be still just a little bit short. It becomes second down a goal just inside the Bookdale three-yard line. I right, take some time here, let that clock continue to run, and I wouldn't do anything but turn around and hand it to Powell again. Injury timeout for the Griffins, so hopefully that's nothing serious down here. 
And we'll see if they stretch those legs out. Could possibly be a cramp. It is still kind of warm out here. It'll cool off in a little while once the sun gets all the way down, but for the moment. This doesn't appear to be a cramp. I don't see them uh, stretching the young man's legs out. So hopefully nothing serious over there. An injured Bookdale player. 3.47 to go in the first half. Harding has a second down and goal at the Bookdale two-yard line. Yeah, it looks like they got him up. He's walking They're off walking under up. his own power. Hopefully we'll be able to see this young man later in the game. You always hate to see injuries, but you definitely hate to see those injuries early in, early in the season. That's number 22, Justin Hill. We've seen him in at running back for a couple plays on Griffin uh, Bookdale's offense. All set to begin play again. It is second down and goal at the two-yard line for the Harding Raiders. Dallas Jets going to keep this one, and he's going to take this one in. Touchdown, Raiders! Another great drive with the explanation point by Dallas Jet. Gets hit at the one-yard line and just drives his way into the end zone to put another six on the board. Now we'll see if they're going to bring Jake out or are they going to try to make this a 14-point game by going for two. Well, I don't see the kicking unit, so I think they're going to go for two here and try and get that point back. It is 12 to nothing. Harding now with 3.32 to play in a half. Harding sets up for a two-point conversion. They got everybody in the box. And that looks like Jones around the end, and I think he got it in at the last second there. A little bit extra effort there. Javante Jones takes it in for two points, and it's 14 to nothing, Warren Harding. Excellent effort there by Devontae Jones. I don't know if that was a corner or if that was a safety that came up, put a big hit on him. He was able to lower his pad level, drive through, and hit that corner of the end zone to be able to get in for the two to make it 14 nothing Raiders. Tremendous second effort on the part of Javante Jones to get back the point off that earlier mixed, missed extra point. And again, Harding takes a 14 to nothing lead late here in the first half. And don't forget, Harding will get the ball to start the third quarter. The Raiders have been nothing short of dominant on the ground against the Bookdale Griffins this evening so far. Oh, absolutely. I mean, big turnaround from last week. Exactly what Coach Arnold wanted to see his team do. Young team, see him rebound. All on the shoulders and behind the leadership of the senior Dallas Jet and the uh, junior Ryan Powell. Ryan Powell, once again, the six foot one, 215 pound junior running back and he has been a load all evening long. And there's the kick from Jake Doherty. That ball is gonna be fielded about the 11 yard line. He's got some running room out there, takes it out. He's finally brought down about the 37. So Buchtel with 3.23 to go is going to have some pretty good field position on this drive late in the second quarter to try and get back in this game before the half. Yeah, this is where you want that defense. You've played a great first half so far, but you still got three minutes and 23 seconds left to go. I'd like to see another three and out, possibly get a few more points up on the board, but this is a big part of the game right here. Finish, finish the half, finish it like you started, finish strong. That looked like number five, Zaire Lewis, on that return for the Griffins. You see him coming back out here to that 
slot position down here on this near side. Stevie Diamond all alone in that backfield, so they're going to be putting the ball in the air here, trying to get something back quick. Straight drop, throws it long over the middle, and there's nobody there but Raider jerseys. Fortunately, that ball wasn't picked off. He overthrew everybody. Pretty good defense, or excuse me, pretty good pressure put on uh, by the Raider defense there. Probably contributed to that arid pass. Stops the clock. Brings up a second down and 10. The Griffins with two timeouts remaining. Looks like Lewis, Coates, and Williams. They're the wideouts over here on the near side. He's got two more up on the far side. And another straight drop back. That ball is caught just beyond the first down marker. Number seven, Dakota Taylor on that reception. Nice pass, gets out of bounds, stop the clock. That's a first down right at midfield, the 50 yard line in the Griffins. On the move just a little bit here. That was Dakota Taylor, the big six foot four junior wide <laughs> receiver for the Griffins. Found an open spot over there. Diamond stays alone in that backfield. Drop straight back. Pressure. He's under some pressure. He's got a lot of company back there. And oh. that ball is almost picked off. You got to assume uh, Jaden Hudson there putting on that <laughs> pressure. Straight four man front. Uh, obviously confused the quarterback because he threw a ball straight to the defender. I think that was Robert Williams. And I think Robert Williams saw a whole lot of yeah, green in front of him. <laughs> Just kind of forgot to wrap his arms around the ball, but at any rate, that brings up a second down and 10. Yeah, it looks like he did have Marcel Boyd, that Boyce down there on the uh, sideline. Couldn't see him, but excellent opportunity, but it's gonna bring up a second and 10 here with 3.04 left. Griffin stay in that empty backfield formation. Diamond drops back once again over the middle. He's got number 10 out there, Dimitris Coates. And that brings up another Bookdale first down, down to the 40-yard line, 2.58 to play in this first half. Bookdale, this is the second drive here in a row that they've started to find a little bit of rhythm with those three-step drop quick hitters. Moving the chains 10 yards at a time. We know the coaches went for a 48-yarder. Couple yards short, let's, let's see what the, the defense could do to stop the bleeding. Griffins are threatening, and once again, and this time, Diamond has no time. He is sacked all the way back at the 48-yard line. And that's going to bring up a second down and 18. Once again, Nye Coleman is a problem over at right defensive end. This He was held on this play and still came up with the sack. Second down and 18 from the 48-yard line. Clock is running. Coming up on two minutes to play in this first half. It's a 14 to nothing Harding lead. Bookdale trying to get back in it right here. And Stevie Diamond again back. Gets it out to the flat. That ball is caught out there. Big hit. He gets a few yards up to about the 39-yard line. Makes a third down and nine. And that was number five, Zaire Lewis on that reception. Took a big hit out there at the end of it, but... They Picks up a few yards for the Griffins. Great athleticism, talked about it all game. He had a lot of room in front of him when he caught that ball. But the speed of this defense was able to make up that space quick, hold it to a, to a nine yard game, bring it up a third and nine. And Harding is gonna take their second timeout of the first half with a minute 26 to play. They wanna talk about this defensive set right here, doing everything they can to keep Bookdell out of the end zone late in the first half and preserve that 14 nothing lead into the lockers. Yeah, smart call by Coach Arnold there, calling that timeout. Big, big possession, or excuse me, big uh, down right here. Third and nine, Bookdale's found a little bit of momentum here, uh, being able to move the ball like we said on those quick hitters. They got a third and nine here. Would really like to see them try to get them off the field right here with a minute 26. Then it's going to be up to the coaching staff if you want to try to put something together or if you just want to kneel it a couple times, head to the locker room with a 14-point lead, knowing that this offense is going to get the ball to start the second half. I got to believe that uh, Bookdale's in four-down territory at this point. 
Maybe. Yeah, I mean, especially where you are right here. I mean, once again, very surprised, you know, that they tried that 48-yard field goal. Also very surprised that they only came up a few yards short on it. But you got to figure this end of the field, this is one of their better opportunities to get something on the board. You want to try to build the confidence of your team going in, even if it's just three points to be able to put on the board, be able to go into the halftime on a high note. Harding's going to do everything they can to prevent that. Third down nine, minute 26 to play in the first half. Stevie Diamond all by himself in that backfield as he has been this entire Bookville Griffin drive. And once again, drops straight back over the middle. Again, oh. And that ball is almost picked off, tipped out there. It's going to bring up a fourth down and nine. And the Griffins living dangerously at this point. Harding showing that they can get pressure on the quarterback with strictly the front four. When you can get pressure with just your front four and leave everybody else back there, it closes up a lot of those passing lanes for the quarterback. And with the speed that they have, it may look like he's open, but the way they make up space, you see plays like that. Fourth and nine. He's Diamond holding looking. Him again. And Diamond with some running room. Diamond powers ahead and scrambles for a first down. Keeps the book to drive alive. I'll tell you again. <coughs> Nye Coleman is a problem out there. He's being held so often by that left tackle. I think he's going to wonder if he's going to get asked to homecoming later. <laughs> Big hit over there. That pass falls incomplete. Second down and 10 at the Harding 28-yard line. That stops the clock at 55 seconds. And you wonder if some point they're going to catch that holding and actually flag it. Well, it's on the opposite side of the field. I know the coaching staff can't see it over here. Obviously, we have a better vantage point. There's the pass outside to Zaire Wilson, and he is met hard by, again by Dallas Jett. That's going to be a loss. So I think that was, uh, that might have been Jamal Martin. I think that was 18. 19. Nine. Oh, Drew McCown. My, my mistake, 19, Drew McCown. Sometimes hard to see those black on black numbers that we have. Tom, you, you know, I, I, <laughs> when, when, when I got involved in everything, I was a young man. <laughs> Now I'm 43, so I have to put the ish on it. I'm young-ish. I coached him when he was like seven years oh, old nice. in, in flag football. I got to assume next year after Dallas Jet graduates, that's going to be your Warren Harding starting quarterback over there. Great kid, great Drew family. McCown, yeah. He was in once or twice last year and, and did a nice job when he was in there. Just a sophomore, so we'll have and, – and, and a big kid, 6'3", 170. Yeah, I think we had a game against maybe it was East where it got out of hand early. He was able to come in, so run that freshman? offense. As a uh, freshman. I coached his little brother, uh, I think it was last year or the year before. He came down, his dad. He was helping out at practice. Just a great kid, great knowledge of the game, has some experience. He's getting some experience here. Can't wait to see him uh, under center next year. Third down and 11. Bookdale having taken a timeout. They're down to one remaining timeout. Again, trying to keep this drive alive. Diamond back to pass, and that ball is picked off. That's number three, Ryan Powell out there. Ryan Powell with the Raider interception. Was, Raider football. It was bound to happen. Diamond got out of a couple of them that should have went back for six. Couldn't get out of that one, but we talk. You see, he sees the lanes. But when you're able to drop back so many players by, because you can get pressure with your front four, it, it, it shuts down those lanes for you. You end up taking those risky chances. This time he got burned. Raiders are going to take over with 35 seconds. One timeout. We'll see what Coach Arnold and the coaching staff chooses to do. First down Harding at their own 36-yard line. 35 seconds of play. And we'll see if Harding wants to take a chance or two here late in the first half. Really got to like what you see on the from the team in this first half here. I was at the Medina game last week, and like we said, you know, 
Uh, Harding went into halftime down 10 to three, came out immediately, drove down the field, were able to tie it up 10-10. They stayed in that game until around mid, late third quarter. Couple mistakes here and there, and Medina was able to take advantage of it and blow it open. Great to see how this team has rebound, shows great character. Javante Jones steps in as running back. He's gonna get the call at the middle, bounces it outside. Gets a few yards before he's dragged down at about the 39-yard line. Brings up a second down and seven. Clock still ticking away. I think Harding's going to be content to let this run out and take that 14-0 lead into the half. Yeah, right now, no reason to, uh, no mistakes, no interceptions, no injuries. Get him off the field. Let him go into the locker room on a high note. Like I said, you know these guys, after last week, they couldn't wait for Friday. They wanted to get back on this field, and they wanted to show themselves, their coaches, the fans, what they were really made of. They came out here, and they've made a statement in this first half. And there's your halftime score. Harding, 14. Akron Buchtel, 0. Eddie and I will be back in a little bit. Sit back and enjoy the Raider Marching Band halftime show. We'll see you soon.
The Raider Band is on the move with this 2015 hit from the boy band, One Direction. This pop rock song reached number three on the top 100 Billboard charts. This trumpet soloist, Brooklyn Brown. Here is Run Me Down.
Generations. This field, this stadium, is where we witness kids start their path to pursue their dreams. Three championship organizations have raised boys into men, gave them their start to build their talents, believe in their dreams, and reach their ultimate goal. In this city, this is not taught just on the football field, but expressed to every student that has ever walked through a Warren City School door. We are taught at a very young age to believe in our talents, believe in our dreams, set a goal, and to never give up.
Welcome back, Raider Nation. Another fine job by the Raider Marching Band, their halftime show. Hope you enjoyed that. Getting ready to start the second half. Your Harding Raiders lead the visiting Akron Booktool Griffins by a score of 14 to nothing. The Raiders will get the ball to start the second half. Tom Bird along with Eddie Colbert. And Eddie, we've been, we've been talking about it. Uh, got a lot of building going on here near the stadium. Yeah, a lot of construction going on out here. You know, they talk about you got to break some eggs to make an omelet. Well, they're going to make a pretty big omelet. And uh, this recreational center that they're going to build here, uh, you know, it, it's going to be state of the art. You know, they're already talking about things like eSports being there. There's going to be a designated area for the robotics team. Uh, robotics team, a lot of you have heard of it from our high school team, uh, led by people like, like, like Frank uh, Bosick. Uh, the, the, even the middle school, they went to state last year, won a couple uh, t uh, um, awards at the state. Great program there. But this is going to be an amazing uh, uh, facility to add to the beautiful grounds here at uh, um, Warren G. Harding, right next to Molenkoff Stadium. I know a lot of people have commented, uh, a lot of the uh, graduates so used to seeing that band shelter here at the south end of the field. They've had to move the band down here to the, to the north side. You see they're redoing the uh, locker rooms that are underneath the stands there. That's why they're blacked out there. But just, you know, I, I know our sports, you know, if you listen to the halftime show and if you're a graduate of uh, Harding, you know about the football team, you know the names, you know the titles. But the academics here at Warren City Schools, uh, there's, there's nothing in this area that can compete with it. My son is going to be a freshman this year, or is a freshman this year. He was able to walk into the doors of, of, of Harding High School already having four credits. He'll have the ability to start college as a sophomore. He's going to take classes that, uh, as most of you know, I am not from here. Uh, proud of the school that I went to in Ashtabula, but the opportunities that are afforded here to you at Warren City Schools, bar none or top notch in this facility that they're going to invest in multi-million dollars is only going to add another level to the experience and the education in which Warren City Schools are going to be provided here. There'll be, you know, and it's not just athletics, there'll be a wellness center, um, a sensory room for autistic children, mm -hmm. um, a bistro where students can learn some entrepreneurship and, and work skills. Uh, some of the minor sports, be a couple of golf simulators for our golf team, start trying to get that program built up a little bit more. Just a, a lot of opportunities for our students and, and the community as a whole. So I, I, I want to say, um, you know, coming from government and my, my, and, and my professional job, uh, big shout out to, to, to Steve Shiro and the uh, Board of Education for being able to foresee this have the funding in place to be able to move uh, a project like this forward. Just a great opportunity, not only for the students here, but for the city as a whole. And so I want to say a big thank you uh, to the whole, everybody who's involved in it, to the architects, to the, to the, to, to, um, to, to the teachers, you know, to the staff. This is going to be a, just an amazing opportunity and, and a well-deserved opportunity for the Warren City kids uh, uh, to be able to take advantage of. And a little word out to the Raider Nation. Don't adjust your sets. Don't worry. This is this is announcer cam. We didn't break in with the Friday Night Horror Show. This really is <laughs> Eddie and myself well, this here. this guy here, though. You never know, right? Warren right. G. Yeah, yeah, you never know what sneaks into the booth. We leave these doors unlocked. but <laughs> Another guy, you don't get to see his right. face a lot, but, you know, all this production you see here, the halftime show, I want to call it the voice of the Warren Harding Raiders. Brandon Giovanni uh, does an amazing job. Everybody at WSCN, I don't think, Tom, we've had an opportunity yet to, to talk about this amazing production that's put together uh, by Frank Bozick, his crew, but specifically the students of Warren G. Harding. We're just, we're, we're, we're blessed to be able to be a part of it. Eddie, Eddie and I come in here, all we do is talk and describe what we see. Students are on the cameras. Students are putting these graphics together all under the guidance of Fred Whitaker and Frank Bozak. If you come down to the stadium, you see our video board. That's Brandon Giovanni's work. A lot of you see his uh, hype videos on, on Facebook, on the Internet. That's all he's doing. And it's just its an absolute pleasure to be part of it. It's just a first-class operation all the way. And Eddie and I are both just, we are blessed and very proud to, to play our little part in it all. You'll see that game of the week that they'll start to do as the season goes on. And an amazing production, obviously, by WKBN, I believe, that puts that on. I, I'll put the production that WSDN does right next to it. Just an honor to be a part of it.
Demetrius Duvall, ready to set the kickoff for the Griffins. Harding does get the ball back. Getting ready to start the third quarter. Harding <laughs> will start the second half with the ball and a 14 to nothing lead. And there's a low line drive kick that's gonna be fielded about the nine yard line. And some good coverage down there by the Griffins will be taken down right around the 21, 22 yard line. I'm gonna try to get a number on that return man. A yeah, dangerous kick there. You want to be able to give your, your 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 kickoff team an opportunity to be able to get down there and 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 make a play. You kick those low line drives like that gives that 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 kick returner a lot of room to get his lot of room to be able to get his speed going. Griffin's did an excellent job there, being able to control that uh, control the runner there and, and stop him at the 25 yard line. I think that was uh, number 16, Nazir Coleman, on that return. No, I don't think that was. I might have been uh, trying to see who that was. I couldn't catch that number. I apologize. But I don't think it was Nye Coleman. Raiders are going to set up first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. Dallas Jet is flanked by Javante Jones and Ryan Powell. And that looks like Javante Jones and... With Ryan Powell leading the way, Javante Jones gets about five on first down. And no matter who's got the ball, they are moving the pile. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Raiders had a lot of success in the first half, establishing that line of scrimmage and moving the ball forward on the ground. Coach Arnold goes right back to it on first down to start the half with a nice gain of five. You get the line doing a good job. You get big 215 pound Ryan Powell in there and you got a lot of forward momentum into that line of scrimmage and Harding has clearly won that battle all night long, especially on the offensive side. Ryan Powell steps in behind Dallas Jet. Powell will get that one and this time he gets stacked up. I don't think he's gonna get anything on that one. That's gonna bring up a third down of five. The Griffiths with a pretty good job that time at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they're starting to stack that box there, knowing that we're knowing that they're getting beat. They're gonna have, they have no choice. They got to stack the box. At that point, Dallas Jet knows how to find those one-on-one -on -one matchups, whether it's the deep ball or finding them, as you saw in the first half, finding that soft spot in the zone. The receiver setting up him with that strong arm being able to deliver that ball quickly, giving those receivers an opportunity to catch and move with the ball after the catch. Powell sets up to Jet's left. Jet's gonna roll out to the left. Looking on this near sideline, he's got Brian Powell out there. That's going to be a first down. Raiders Powell still moving and still driving it forward all the way out to the 47-yard line. Big play for the Raiders, first and 10. Tom, I honestly think that's when Dallas Jett is his most dangerous. When Coach Arnold gets him out there on those corners, pressuring the line of scrimmage, making them make a decision. The receivers are smart. They're feeling that soft, uh, that cushion that they're getting, 10, 15 yards. They're hooking up quick for him, able to hit him with those quick passes, and once again, able to get that ball quickly so they can turn, make a move upfield. And as you saw, it was just pure strength and determination after that. First and 10 Raiders at their own 47-yard line, and again, moving the ball. Quick screen. That looks like Powell again. There are flags all over the place. A lot of yellow laundry coming in on that one. Yeah, they're going to call a block in the back there. Like the effort, but got to get in front of him on that one. That was actually Devin Boss, the receiver on that screen play. But that play is going to come back. And we'll see how this offense responds here. That's going to be a 10 or 15 yard. They're going to put him in a first and very long situation. Raiders offense hasn't been in this kind of adversity all game. We'll see how they respond. That uh, penalty walked off from the point of the foul. That takes the ball back to the 34 yard line. That's going to bring up a first down and 23. The good news is it's just first down, but we got 23 yards to go to pick up another one. Yeah, don't need them all on one play. Don't need to do anything special. Just do what's been working. Jet keeps it. Picks up a few yards out to the 40. Takes it out to the 40 yard line. 
Gets six yards on that play, brings up a second down and 17. You know, you look at that, Tom, and you say, ah, not much there. That's a six-yard play. Six-yard play is going to score on every drive. Absolutely. Second down and 17. <coughs> Ryan Powell in the backfield alongside Dallas Jett. There's three receivers up on top. Jett's going to roll out to his right this time. Now he's going to reverse field, come back to the left. He's going to keep this one, get around a corner, and Jett's going to pick up a few yards out to the 45. Another five yards. That brings up a third down and 12. And the Raiders have been able to pick up big chunks of yardage. That third down and 12 becomes pretty manageable at this point. Well, third down and 12, I'll tell you what I take out of that play, though, Tom. You know, he, he, he rolled out there. He came back here to the, to the left-hand side, got his way upfield. But I like the fact that he stepped out of bounds. At the end of the day, we got to remember, he's the quarterback. This is the second game of the year. You know, they got him going both ways. He's doing some punt return as well. I like the fact that he, he acknowledges what he has to do, that this is his team. Step up, take the play, step out of bounds, live for the next play. Jet looking back, he's under some pressure, steps up to avoid it. And Jet's gonna lose his helmet and go down. There's a flag on the play. I think uh, that might that might go against a Griffin because that helmet got ripped off on that play. I think he's going to get that, but right now concerned about Dallas Jet. Just Jet talked was, about Jet's down now. He had no helmet at the end of that play, so yeah. hopefully he did not take uh, a, a shot there. I guess see what's going on with that. There are flags on the play. Dallas Jet back to pass under a lot of pressure. Tried to step up into the pocket and tuck in and run. Had the helmet ripped off at the end of that play. So whether he was uh, hitting the head or you know straight on the neck He's, on that one too, just uh, well, I think I saw he might have he might have taken a knee to the head right there. Um, I don't know what the official saw there. You would assume that as soon as that helmet comes off, I know it's a dead ball uh, when the helmet comes off. Not sure if they were able to see it in time to get those whistles blown, but right now, you know, just concerned with the young athlete on the on the ground right now. Harding seeming to have uh, pretty much everything going their way, and this at uh, this this point, this early in the season, this is one of the last things that the Raiders needed to have happen. And of course, you know that's that's secondary to uh, to the well-being of Dallas Jets. So we're hoping uh, to see him up on his feet here momentarily. They are still tending to him on the field, down about the 40-yard line. So that was uh, was not a good situation. Anytime you go helmetless on yeah. a football field. That's not where you want to be, especially with the ball in your hand. I see his, looks like his father's down on the field with him now. Looks like they're going to get him up. Good to see him get up. He's walk, looks like he's going to walk off under his own power. Off the field, but he does look a bit a wobbly woozy, down yeah. there. So I would well, venture to say, I do not believe we will see Dallas yet the remainder of the evening. I'm sure they're going to go through the Concussion, concussion protocol. protocols and see see where he's at but um yeah when he went down i thought i saw him take take a knee to the possibly a knee to the head there um you know as an athlete and especially as a competitor like him regardless of that helmet coming off or not he didn't hear a whistle he was going 100 percent. absolutely you know he's a competitor and uh you know no 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 you know wasn't the defense's fault they're out there they're trying to make plays too you know, unfortunately, something like this happens. We just hope that, you know, maybe it's something that, you know, just shook him up a little and, uh, you know, we'll see him back here soon. Looks like they're gonna take his helmet. You see, he just tried to grab his helmet. He wants back in the game. And uh, sophomore Drew McCowan steps in for Dallas Jet, number 19. And he drops the initial snap. There's a fumble on that play. And it looks like Harney's got the ball back. Lose a couple yards. The uh, penalty took the ball all the way up to about the 45-yard uh, line, made it a, uh, a short third down. Now the loss on that play is going to make it fourth and about six at the 49-yard line. And the Raiders send in Jake Doherty. He's going to punt it away, get the defense <laughs> on the field, and try to regroup. Looks like they're coming. Dory gets the punt off. 
They get a good bounce. It's a nice roll for the Raiders. That's going to roll all the way down to the 10-yard line. Nice job by the punt team. First and 10, Bookdale at their own 10. And this game might just be in the hands of the defense at this point. Well, you know, the positive thing we talked about, Drew had some experience, a little bit of experience last year. Smart kid, knows the offense. Uh, but right now, you know, they weren't depending on the pass to begin with. You know, so for Drew to be able to come in there, turn around, hand that ball off to the big horse, hand that ball off to a couple of the scat backs, use that offense uh, as a defense, keeping their offense off the field and just wind this clock down. But right now, obviously, a uh, lot of thoughts going to Dallas Jet right now. First and 10, Griffins at their own 10 yard line. Stevie Diamond with his offense back out there. There's a handoff up the middle and that was Wiley Cheers and he is hit right away and that might be a loss of a yard. Looks like they're gonna set that up at the nine yard line. Brings up a second down and nine. Yeah, defense still out there flying around. 11 hats to the ball on every play. And the good news is we look down here, Dallas Jets sitting up. He's answering questions. They're checking him out. Well, he's a competitor. Once again, he wants back in the game. They got to do what's best for him. And Diamond steps back to pass out this here to the sideline. It's number three, Marcel Boyce Jr. Picks up a few yards. Gets it out to about the 18, 17 yard line they're going to give him. That brings up a third down and short. Third and three for the Griffins. 6.50 to play in the third quarter. Harding on top, 14 to nothing. Looking for the defense to make a stop here deep in Akron territory. Bookville going back to what worked for them in the first half, those quick hitters trying to get something quick, see if some of their athletes can take it the distance. Diamond steps back to pass again. Quick shot out. That pass is a little bit high. That's going to bring up fourth down and three here. Got to assume that Booknell's going to want to punt this. That pass intended for Zaire Lewis. Left himself exposed, jumping for that ball, and he took a big hit on that play, but he bounced right back up to his credit, and it looks like the Booknell punting team is on their way to the field. Raylan Weaver ste stepping back to uh, take this punt in the place of Dallas Jet. Now you forget Dallas was also the deep man for the punt, so we'll we'll see if this has any bearing on the uh, punt return with Dallas being out. And kind of a high snap and a very short kick. It doesn't take. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of a book to hop. It's going to give Harding very good field position at their own 48-yard line after the short punt. It'll be first and 10 Harding with 631 to play in the third quarter at their own 48 yard line. And I'm certain that Drew McCowan will be coming back out on this series of plays. They are not in any rush at all to get Dallas Jet back on his feet, which I'm sure is the, uh, the wise thing to do at this point. No, absolutely. And like I said, you get Drew in the game here, get him comfortable, get him under center, get him turning around, hand, like, let that offensive line do what they've been doing all game. Let those running backs just take control of the game eat this clock out, grind out the yards. Let's get back in the locker room and let's start looking forward to next week. Yeah, it's like we said many times last year, Ed, next man up. And that man right now is Drew McCowan. Oh, ab absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> McCowan in the backfield, he's got Ryan Powell off to his right. This time the snap is handled cleanly. Ryan And Ryan Powell loses a handle on the ball. And that looks like it's going to be booked to football at the Harding 49-yard line. Got to hold on to the ball. You start to see those holes open up. Gets a little loose. Booked showing a lot of fight right now. Maybe they got a spark knowing that, uh, you know, QB1 went down. Starting corner. Uh, went down, team leader went down. They see that opportunity and, and they're doing their best to try to take advantage of it. And, and this is where, you know, you, you got to stay focused out in the field. Yeah, it's, it's, you're, you're thinking about your teammate, 
But now you got to focus back on the business at hand. And right now that business is defense. So the Raiders looking to step up and stop uh, Book Duel once again. They got their um, about their best field position of the evening starting on the Harding side of the field. Diamond out to the flat. Another Pick. high pass. Did he get it? And oh. he could not come up with it. And that ball was tipped. And that was almost a Harding interception. Tom, no substitution for speed, no substitution for effort. All night we've been talking about this defense just flying around. You get a ball out that, that goes awry out there, there's a good opportunity for an interception. And that's because of speed and that's because of effort. I think that was, that's a Reese Coleman Bay over there almost came up with that one. Second down and 10 for the Griffins. There's a pitch out to Cheers. Cheers gets a couple before he's knocked out of bounds. Looks like they'll give him about three. It's gonna bring up a third down and long for Akron Buchtel. Little toss sweep there to the short side of the field. Defensive end doing his job, trying to turn that ball back inside. Little gain of three. Gonna bring up, what, about a third and Looks like they've only given him one on that. We're looking at third and nine, according to that field marker over there. Another big play for this Harding defense after a couple spotty offensive series. Watch the front four's pressure. Diamond back to pass. He steps up into the pocket. He's only going to get a couple, and it's going to be fourth down in about four or five. And we'll see if... Uh, <laughs> Bookto brings out that punting unit if they want to try to keep this drive alive right here. Uh, with what their punts have given them, not much of a gamble here to go ahead and try and go for this. No, they don't have much of a choice here. Best field position, like you said. Call it fourth down and five at the Raider 44 yard line. The Bookto offense remains on the field. Now we'll see. On a fourth down, is, is, is the coaching staff going to send one of these linebackers? They've been getting pressure with the four. We'll see if they send a fifth. Diamond steps back, looking over the middle. And that ball is broken up over there. And uh, it looks like Aris Coleman Bay once again in on that play, the last two plays. Or was that Devin Boss? I can't. That's Devin Boss. I'm sorry. Devin Boss breaking that one up, number six. Devin Boss, uh, the upperclassman out there, a senior, only listed at 5'8", 160, but he uses that whole body, he uses the athleticism and his speed. We talked before the game, they got a couple receivers that, you know, these are this is D1 size, 6'1", 6'2", 6, uh, 6, 6 receivers out there. These corners have held their own all night with them. And once again, the defense steps up, forces the Griffiths off the field. And Drew McCowan out there once again. It's a big drive right here. You want to settle everything down. You want about a 10 play drive here. Just settle everybody down, get back into your game. You want to get that, get that first play where we hold on to the ball. McCowan fumbled the first snap. Then on his second snap, Powell fumbled. And this time Powell has the ball. And this time Powell holds on to it. And he drives ahead for a first down. That's an 11 yard pickup for Ryan Powell. And I think that's just what that offense needed after the last couple snaps. That was a purpose run right there. He took the ball, he's upset. He fumbled the ball. They, 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 they see the momentum starting to swing. And I think Powell's gonna it's 22. That's Powell, yep, that's he's Powell. gonna, looks like, uh, I'm, thinking that's, I'm thinking that's, I'm thinking that looks like, like cramp. cramps. <clears throat> but a big run there by Ryan Powell. He's up right away. He's going to have to come out of play. They'll go stretch those legs out. But that's exactly what that offense needed. He had a fumbled snap on Drew's first play in there. Next play, he gets a handoff off to Ryan Powell. Powell gets the ball stripped. Now you get a nice big run up the middle, and hopefully that gets everything back on track for the Raiders. Yeah, you know, everything starts with the run game. Everything starts up front, and, and they've been able to dominate all night there. Um, you know, you kind of stay with what works for you. They show that they can stop it. All right, we'll start we're, We'll start throwing the ball around a little bit. But right now, you know, they've spread the ball around. I want to say three, maybe four uh, different players have touched the ball out of the backfield. All of them have been able to get some positive yardage out there. 
Uh, but that all starts up front, and a lot of credit to that offensive line. First and 10 for the Raiders. They're at the Griffin 46-yard line. And there's a handoff up the middle of Devin Boss. Boss gets a couple. It's going to make it second and eight. He gets up to the 44-yard line. That Boss upset there. He looks like somebody got him by the ankle, tripped him up. I think he was looking at that safety with one move. Looks like he had some space when he first got that ball. Boss remains in the backfield to McCowan's right. And this time Drew's gonna throw it. Quick pass over there to Jones. Jones keeps his feet, still trying to get some yards, gets close to a first down. It's gonna be about a couple short, but once again. That was Najee Jones on the reception. Bookzell's playing so far back off these receivers and then they're bailing as soon as the snap comes. It, this is just, just pitch and catch. Third down and three for the Raiders. They're up to the Griffin 44 yard line. It looks like slowly but surely Drew McCowan starting to gain a little bit more confidence every snap he gets out there. Well, you know, he, you, you know, when you know you've got the running game going for you, you start throwing those little five, 10 yarders, get some comfortable in there, and then you open up the field for them. There's another give to that time. It's uh, Javante Jones, and Jones still moving a pile ahead. He gets a first down, down to the Griffin 38-yard line. Javante Jones just keeps the legs pumping, picks up another five or six yards. First down, Raiders. Six foot 170 senior, ran like he was 6'4", 220 on that play, showed a lot of heart. After first contact, probably had another six yards after that. First and 10 Raiders at the Griffin 33-yard line. 2.20 to play in the third quarter. It's 14 to nothing Harding, and Harding is on the move here in the third quarter. Javante Jones lines up behind Drew McCowan once again. And, and it looks like Mr. Provit tried to get out of his position, and he dropped like a rock. I, Eddie, you and I both know that feeling. That thing hits you in the calf and it's lights out. I, 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 you know, I don't know. I've told this story, probably tell it every year. My senior, junior year, we're playing Harvey Painesville. It's nothing but me and a safety. And uh, that cramp came. I went down on the ground. I ripped my helmet off and took a bite out of the ground. It hurt so <laughs> bad. It, it is a pain like you've never oh, felt it's... before. Uh, and when you've never felt one before, you think it is a serious injury. And they come out there and they start pushing and stretching you, and that hurts even more. Um, but the worst part, Tom, is when we were young, they made us drink pickle juice. <laughs> you know, today they got, they got something better for you. <laughs> but it, you, you, you cannot wait until Friday. You've got to start uh, hydrating early in the week. Uh, it doesn't matter what the temperature is going to be here at game time or when the sun goes down. You know every year this comes with the heat and the humidity, uh, you, you suffer these cramps. And it's just, it's, it's a discipline, uh, unlike, just like anything else. It, it, it's a discipline of making yourself push yeah. the pop away, push the sugary drinks away, and hydrate yourself with water to try to prevent some of these injuries. I, my, my first game my senior year, I, I tried to extend myself out for pass reception and I, both both calves went when I was in midair. I remember that one. <laughs> and uh, um, coaches came out, got me up on my feet. I made about three steps back towards the sideline, and they weren't giving up. I went yep. down again, and, and they grab hold, and they don't want to let go. And, and the thing is about these these kinds of cramps, all right, yeah, you get back in the game and you play, you feel them the next day. Oh, yeah. You are Your legs are stiff and sore the next day from this. So you got to really, like you said, get oh. some water in you, get some stretches going because – Oh, the way that muscle just spasms, it is, uh, like I said, if you've never had one, you, 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 think it is a, you think it's a serious injury. I mean, and, and it hurts physically, but mentally, you, you think you're done for the year. You think that you've really done something. And it's just like I said, it, it, it can't be Friday morning starting to drink no. water. You, you, you got to start early in the week. You got to do it, it all just, week. Just hydrating yourself, 
uh, no different than you condition, no different than you lift weights. You got to get that H2O in you uh, to try to prevent some of these these uh, these cramps. Still attending to Chris Provert out there. Again, he was on his way out to his slot position in that offense, and just before the snap uh, dropped dropped to the ground, those cramps hit him hard. And when they hit, they hit fast. They don't. There's no warning. That muscle balls up, and and he's up on his feet now. Get in here, stretch him out a little bit more. I'm, we'll see him again this this evening. I mean, I remember last year a couple guys. Uh, we watched him go down multiple times. Yeah. In the same game with uh, with just with just the cramps. Early in the season, I think we watched Dom Foster go down yeah. a few times. That one. Guy Ivory went down a couple Ivory times. Yeah. Two minutes, eight seconds left to go in the third quarter. It's first and 10, Harding at the Bookdale 33-yard line. Drew McCowan in a quarterback for the injured Dallas Jets. And there's the give to Javante Jones again. Jones gets some more positive yardage. Four yards on that first down carry. Second down and six. From the Griffin 29 yard line. Clock continues to tick here in the third quarter. Harding ahead 14 to nothing. Yeah, great open field tackle there by Fletcher from uh, the Griffs there. Without that uh, tackle, he, he, he had end zone all in front of him there. Continue to look down the sideline, continue to work on the legs of, of, Pro of Provit. And there's another hand off to Jones. Jones almost breaks it, gets close to a first down. They're going to mark him about a yard short, 31 at the 24 yard line. Another shoestring tackle there, or he was in the house. Yeah, and the other thing I'm paying attention to here is the clock. You see, we're going to be under a minute here in the third quarter. This, uh, when you can establish the run, it does so many things for you. It's like in basketball when you run a slow paced offense, a five point lead becomes a 10 point lead because the, 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 the other side just doesn't have the opportunity to score. Excellent, uh, excellent planning, excellent uh, game plan by the Raiders here. And again, Javante Jones. This time he gets pushed back. He's going to lose a couple on that one. That's going to bring up about a fourth down and three back to the 26-yard line. They're going to take this into the fourth quarter. And perhaps we'll see a Jake Doherty field goal attempt to get the Raiders up 17-0. This would be a good opportunity for that. He uh, missed one left earlier in the ball game. Had all the leg he needed, just kind of pulled it a little bit. What is he, 26, 36? Uh, you're looking at about a 42-yarder. Doherty had a uh, missed extra point, though it's hard to blame him for that. It was a bad snap, yeah. and the holder really never got the ball back in place for him. But we go to the fourth quarter, and it is Harding, 14. Akron Bookdale zero. Harding will have a fourth and three at the Bookdale 26 yard line. Coach Arnold's going to discuss what he wants to do with this play. Try to get the first down or maybe put the ball on the foot of Jake Doherty here. We're going to find out in a moment or two. You know, fourth and three, the way they've been moving the ball on the ground, the way these corners have been giving them these, you know, 10, 12 yard cushions, it's not out of the question that Coach Arnold may decide to go for it here early, you know, in the beginning of the fourth quarter with this short fourth and three, specifically the way the offense has been moving the ball. I'm looking on the sideline to see if I can see Jake. Can't tell if he's on the sideline or if he's. Uh, I think the Harding gonna go offense for is going to go for this on fourth and three.
Maybe a hard count here. See if you can catch a... Fourth and three at the book to 26 yard line. He's got Powell in the backfield. Ryan Powell is back in there. Drew McCowan in the quarterback. He's got Ryan Powell off to his right. And the ball's getting, oh, McCowan's going to keep it. And McCowan is not going to get up back to the line of scrimmage. And Harding is going to turn the ball over on downs on the first play of the third, fourth quarter. And the Griffins are going to take over. Looks like the, uh, at their own 32 yard line, first and 10. Well, the defense is gonna come back on the field here. Uh, you know, give, uh, give Akron Bucknell some credit as well. Came out here, was able to hold Harding, Harding scoreless in that third quarter. Uh, you know, one score puts you back in the game here with 11.54 left. And as this game wears on, it's looking more and more like the game is gonna be in the hands of the Harding defense at this point. The Harding offense, while they are moving the ball, drives are stalling out as they get into Bookdale territory. So the defense has to come in and step it up again. Diamond drops back, looking to pass. He's going long over the middle and he's high. Looking for Marcel Boyce out there. And that was just out of reach of Mar the six foot two wide receiver out there. Yeah, quarterback dropped back. He wanted to go to his six two receiver, but that receiver was double covered there. Uh, great defense by the Raiders to bring up this second and 10. Second and 10, Akron Bookdale at their own 28 yard line. Boyce and Williams are the receivers down here on the near side. Defensive line once again Hand getting penetration. Handoff goes to <laughs> Wiley Cheers and he gets uh, maybe a yard off that. So that brings up a third Harding down and down. nine. Another Harding player down. Looks like it's cramps. You got a lot of guys going both ways. Uh, hot, humid night. You know, you're, you're, you're perspiring. Uh, it's just going to keep on leading to those cramps, especially later in the game here, um, as your body's getting depleted of its, of, its, uh, of its water. You know, you, you, like I said, you can't stress it enough. Got to be able to hydrate during the week. I don't know, did we get a number for who's down? Um, I was trying to see, I think it's a single digit number. I'm not sure if that's, uh, might be, yeah, not sure if that's uh, Eris Bay, Coleman Bay or not out there. I could be wrong about that. We'll see who that is when the young man gets up. Injury timeout as a Harding player is on the field with uh, another set of leg cramps. 11.35 to go in the contest. Harding will be looking at a third and nine. Just an update. Griff Griffins will be looking at a third and nine from their own 29 yard line. Just a uh, update for everybody watching here. You don't get to see what we see down here. Uh, real positive news, Dallas Jett is on the sideline right now. Uh, throwing passes uh, with Drew, uh, <coughs> excuse me, with Drew McCown right now. So, looks like uh, he, he should be okay. He's up throwing the ball around right now. Scary moment. Helmet came off. They're showing him now here on the sideline. Um, don't think he's going to go back into the game, but obviously a really good sight to see him up tossing the ball around after that scary moment of watching his helmet getting ripped off and them him him being in the middle of that tackle.
Still working on the injured Harding defensive player out there. Trying to get those legs stretched out so we can get him up and over to the sidelines. It's nice to have these balmy Friday nights. That's nice for the people in the stands, but that, that's, that's not so good when you're on the field and uh, in 40 pounds of uh, football equipment. Yeah, and like you said, you know, you, they got a lot of guys, you know, Dallas Jet, one of them, you know, going both ways, working the special teams as well, takes a lot out of you. Um, I mean, shoot, I'm sweating up here, and all <laughs> yeah. I'm doing is talking. Oh, yeah. Still hard to, I think that's Devin Boss. It looks like number six out there. Let's or no, a that's six or a five. I think that's Javante Jones. Yes, that's number five. Javante Jones. Nope, said it was Boss. Oh, okay. He said it, it was six, right. Boss. Third down and nine. Uh, nah, that's 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 Javante Jones. That's not Devin Boss. Diamond back to pass on third and nine. He finds the man out in the flats. That's close to a first down. That's number three. And again, I believe that's uh, Marcel Boyce. That's a first down for Buchtel. We go back, see if see what type of uh, corrections Buchtel made. That first half, Nye Coleman was a real problem uh, coming off of that, of, of our left side here. There, uh, excuse me, our, yeah, our right side, their left end. He was a problem the whole first half. Let's see if we're gonna call his name here soon. First and 10 Akron, you get it out to the 38-yard line. And again, out to the flats, first missed tackle. There's a flag on the play. That's Zaire Lewis, number five on that reception. A lot of yards for Akron. Let's see what this flag's all about back here. A flag sitting on about the 45-yard line. Way to push off to get open like that. We'll see what the call is. Looks like a holding. 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 So a big play for Akron, but it's going to come back as there is a holding call on that play. Diamond to Zaire Lewis, big yardage, but the penalty is going to nullify all that and bring the ball back. Holding one of the biggest drive killers. That 10-yard penalty really hurts, generally as a result of not being able to get your feet, not moving quick enough, so you find yourself out of position. You got no other choice other than to hold. It's going to bring everything back from the spot of the foul. That's going to bring up a first down and 13 after that holding call is walked off from the spot of the foul. Clock continues to tick, 10.50 to play. Diamond with the quick pass outside, and that is not complete. Tell you one of the first times I saw the Raiders bring a blitz, they got there, and it looks like Diamond is down after taking a big hit after getting that throw off. Had Xavier Wilson out there. Wilson had his hands on the ball, couldn't come up with it. And Stevie Diamond is getting up slow. He's going to stay in the ball game. Second down, 13 for the Griffins. Ball at their own 35-yard line. Stevie Diamond took a big hit in that backfield on that last play. Stays in the ball game. Raiders brought brought some pressure from the right-hand side there. Bookdo had to try to pick it up. Opened up the middle. They came straight right, right, right in his face. Big hit. And bad snap, but Diamond scoops it up, and he's going to be sacked. For a big loss in that backfield. That's going to move the ball all the way back inside the 30-yard line, down to about their own 29, and it's going to be third and extremely long, third and almost 20 yards at this point. Everything falling apart for Booknell right now on this drive after that penalty, and it looks like they've got a player down on the field right now. Can't see who that is. They haven't immediately gone to the legs. This looks like something a little more than a heat cramp. 
9.46 to play. Harding on top, 14 to nothing. Bookdool's going to face a third and 19 once we resume play in a few minutes here. Hopefully the young man gets up and gets off the field under his own power. Uh, looks like they're going to get him up on his feet here. He's going to be able to walk off under his own power. That was number 22, Justin Hill. Young man gets off the field, even jogs off a little bit. Well, he'll sit out for at least a play. Looks like he's kind of holding that left shoulder over there, that left arm hanging down. So, yeah, Hopefully just something like a stinger. He can kind of shake that off. We'll see him here later in the game. He's come in and given Wiley Chairs a breather here and there. A third and 19 here, difficult situation. Don't have a lot of 19 yard plays in the playbook. And the way Harding's been getting the pressure here, he's gonna have to get this one off quick. Somebody's gonna have to make a play for Booknell in order for them to get a first down or a manageable fourth and short. Stevie Diamond's got cheers in the backfield with him. He's gonna drop straight back and look downfield, gets the pass off. And a little bit wide of target. Looking for Demetrius Coates over there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down and 19. Now, I wouldn't think this is uh, four down territory. It looks like Demetrius Duvall is Demetrion of Duvall out there, the place kicker and also the punter coming in to do the punting. And he hasn't had he hasn't had a good showing thus far with the punts. Harding should end up with pretty good field position here. If they can get the ball, do what they've been doing all game, grind out some runs, take this clock down to about five, four minutes, even if they don't score, it should be able to put it out of the reach. Raylan Weaver back on his own 40 yard line and a low kick that's gonna roll and Harding's gonna let that roll. It's gonna roll down inside the 35, down to almost the 32 yard line of Harding. And that's where the offense will set up shop. First down and 10, 9, 13 to play. Yeah, got, got bailed out there by the roll. You know, uh, not the greatest of punts there, but he was able to, uh, able to get a decent roll out of that. Gonna bring it down to, what do you say, about the 32 yard line. But once again, Harding can grind this out here. Turn around, hand that ball to some of these running backs four or five yards at a time. Drive that ball down the field. Score or not score. Give, give uh, Bookdale the ball back. Four or five minutes left. Should be out of reach. Drew McCowan remains in at quarterback. Dallas Jet getting the rest of the evening off. He's got Ryan Powell to his left. And Powell's gonna get met as soon as he gets the ball, and he's gonna lose a lot of yards on that play. All the way back inside the 25 yard line. They're gonna mark him at the 26, but it's gonna be second down in about 15 off of that play. Now obviously not how hard he wanted to start out this drive. Uh, some confusion up on the line there. Let some guys get through. Hit him for about a six yard loss. Gonna bring up a second and a long 16. Raylan Weaver and Devin Boss, they are up there wide left. McCowan down here to Jones. He hits Jones, gets back some of that yardage. He's gonna get out to about the 41 yard line before they push it back. McCowan hits Najee Jones. Gets some of that yardage back, makes it a manageable third and about seven yards now, third and six possibly. That's what you were really looking for in a play like that. Drew McCown's showing a really strong arm on that throw there. Harding looking to get the first down, keep this clock moving. There's seven, 7.45 to play in the game. Harding sits on top, 14 to nothing. 
trying to run this clock down. Drew McCowan trying to close this game out for the Raiders at quarterback. Giving a lot of space. Look at these corners. Look at all the space they're giving them. McCowan back to pass over the middle. And that ball's a little bit high. Uh, a little too much on that for the receiver to handle. That's going to bring up a fourth down at six. And I think the Raiders are going to punt this one away and put it in the hands of the defense one more time. Jake Doherty on with the punting unit. McCown made a great read right there. I was looking at the receivers to the outside with those hooks that have been working all night. Corners are bailing on, on the snap. Had the right read. Unfortunately, receiver couldn't come up with it. Nice punt from Jake Doherty. All the way back, field at the 24-yard line. And a nice open field tackle at the 30. That was number six, Trevante Fletcher on the return, and he did not get very far with that. That was 25 sophomore, 5'7", 150, Gene Grant with the big hit on special teams. Take that back, that's number five, Zaire Lewis on that return. And nice open field tackle. Talked about a lot of young players here. A lot of young players, you know, the opposition sees that, think they can take advantage of it. They've held their own tonight, but gives you a lot of good feelings about the future of this program. You know, this, this Bookdale team's a very young team, too. You look down that roster, you see a lot of sophomores <laughs> and juniors down that roster. Not uh, too absolutely. many seniors on this program. So this, this could be a team to be contended with in the next year or two. And there's a pass complete to Marcel Boyce. Gets that out close to a first down. Brings up a second down and one from the Bookdale 39 yard line. And the defense still needs to step up. There is time for Bookdale if they get some things going. I think there's something wrong with the sticks. Another complete pass is to Dimitri's Coates. That gets the first down. Sorry, that was number 18, Xavier Wilson on that reception. And Wilson and Boyce are lined up down on this side. First and 10, Akron. That pass falls incomplete. Looking for Xavier Wilson. Wilson seemed to have lost his footing on that one and wasn't quite where Stevie Diamond expected him to be on that pass. It falls down harmlessly. Second down and 10, Akron Bookdale. Stops the clock at 6.41 to play. Boyce and Wilson again on this side. Looking for Boyce, he's got Boyce open and just overthrows him. He had Boyce, Boyce had a step. Boyce had a step on that Harding secondary. Third and 10, that pass gets overthrown a little bit. Yeah, that was a, that was, that was a footstep away from this being a seven point game. <laughs> this is where it comes down, you're late in the game. This is all about the summer. This isn't about practice. This isn't about Monday through Thursday. This is all what you did in the off season. This is about your conditioning. This is what you screamed during practice. Fourth quarter, that's what you do all those sprints for. That's what you do those gassers for. That's what you do those up downs for. It's for this time right here, late in the fourth quarter. Who's got it, who doesn't? Bookdell with their first time out of the second half. Trying to put something together there. 6.35 to play. Third and 10. Yeah, as it winds down, Bookdell realizes, you know, you can't squander these opportunities. You know, they show, they show little spurts here and there. Just haven't been able to sustain a drive. You know, people talk about the ways you win football games. A lot of people say it's defense. And, and, and I won't deny that defense does win the championships. You want to win a game. You either have to be able to sustain a long drive 
or you have to be able to have players that can score from anywhere on the field. Buchdahl has proven to not be able to do either. The only way that that's going to happen is going to be on a misstep from the Harding defense. Mentally sharp right now. You know, as you see these cramps starting to come in, well, those cramps are because you're, you're hot, you're tired, you're dehydrated. Well, that all leads to mental mistakes as well. So this is where you got to focus in, know your job, and most importantly, trust your teammates. Do your job, do your assignment. Third and 10, and this is a big play for the Bookdale offense. As they try to keep this drive alive, third and 10 at their own 44 yard line. Justin Hills, the running back in there alongside Stevie Diamond. Here comes the blitz. They picked it up. Diamond over the middle. He's got, he's got Boyce. Boyce breaks a tackle. Boyce inside the 30, all the way down. And Boyce still on his feet. Out of bounds, finally at the 10 yard line. Diamond Hill finds Marcel Boyce Jr. A big play, and Akron is a snap or two away from getting back in this football game late in the fourth quarter. All night, this is what Bucknell's been trying to do, those little 5, 10 yard passes, seeing if their athletes can do something with it. Harding defense took a chance right there, brought the blitz, it was instantly picked up. That left Harding at a disadvantage. Quarterback was able to take advantage of that. Receiver was able to get up the field for a big gain We'll see if they can capitalize and put it back into the end zone. I think he's looking for something. There's something down there. He's His seems to have lost something. Mouthpiece, maybe. Well, that's something I haven't seen. Uh... Boyce was ruled out of bounds at the 25 yard line. Initially, it looked like he got down about the 10, but he stepped out about the 25, or to be first and 10. And looked like one of the Akron linemen <laughs> looking for a mouthpiece or yeah. something. And they finally got the, got a man in here with the proper equipment. So we got to make up a better story than that. <laughs> we got to make up something better because the way he was trotting around the field like that, that's a TikTok video waiting to happen. High snap. Diamond corrals it, gets the ball off to Justin Hill. Hill trying to get outside, and he does. Hill hurdles a man inside the 15-yard line, and it's a first and 10. Akron Buchtel down around the 12-yard line. Steve Arnold has a right to be upset about this. The running back obviously motioned towards the line before that ball was snapped. Nothing was called. Should well, we see they do some... have flags on the far side. Let's see what they're talking about there. Yeah, you can see him leaning forward before that snap. I saw that myself. Got two flags down over there around where the play was made, but that should have been blown dead on a false start. Not sure what the call is down here at this point. We're going to find out here. Yep, they're walking it back. They're going to bring it back to the 25. So it looks like a spot foul just comes back to the 25. Basically, it's play over. First and 10 back at the 25 again. But, uh, yeah, you're right. They had that, to call something on. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure you're allowed to jump over people in football. I'm, I'm I can't sure, tell what that call was. Sure what, I'm not sure what that is. And well, they're bringing it back a little bit further. It's going to make a first down at 15, which is probably where we should have been in the first place. Correct. Correct. Well, the penalty, whatever it was, <laughs> has taken the ball back to the 30 yard line. That's going to make it first down and 15. Akron Booktool. We're down to 615 and counting in the ball game. And good to see 77 Zayon Butler of uh, Bucknell found whatever he was whatever looking he's for. Whatever he's looking for, he's got it. Yeah, he's got it now. <laughs> Lofting out over the end there. Yeah, they're gonna call face guarding on that. That's gonna be a pass interference type call against the Raiders down there. I believe he was looking for Looking for Marcel Boyce, who's been the targeted receiver most of the night. 
for Stevie Diamond. And you see the corner didn't get his head around. They're going to call him for the face guard there. Luckily, this is high school football. That's just going to be a 10-yard penalty and not a spot foul. But I do believe it is the automatic first down. So we're counting off from first and 15. The official's counting off. He's counting off 15 yeah, yards 15 down yards, to yes. the 15-yard uh, line, which will probably give Akron a first and 10. Yes, it does. So the Bookdale Griffins will have a first and 10 at the Harding 15-yard line. We're just under six minutes to play. Harding defense trying to keep Akron out of the end zone. Still a two-possession ball game, but that could change. Defense needs to step up here. Well, don't think that the defense isn't thinking about a shutout. Absolutely. That's that's always a, that's always a nice feather right. in your cap when there's, you get that, there's a, there's a that zero on the board. Yeah, there's absolutely a pride factor here. And it looks like Justin Hill once again in the backfield sets up behind Stevie Diamond. Keep your eye on Boyce. Boyce is a receiver down here on the near sideline. He's been the target. That's going to, and there's Whoa. a fumble. Diamond loses a hand on that ball. I don't know if he's trying to hand off or fake to Justin Hill, but whatever happened, that ball was up in the air. Diamond covers it, and it's about a five or six yard loss for the Griffins. Yeah, it looks like he got crossed up there, and the way Harding's getting uh, their linemen, that pressure through there, well, those, just those couple tenths of a second mean everything. That defense is right there. You got nothing to do except for tuck and, tuck and duck. That's a six-yard loss on the play. Second down at 16. Ball back at the Harding 21-yard line. Again, Boyce and Lewis are on this side of the field, and it looks like Harding's going Harding's to take their second timeout of the first half. Coach Arnold wants to get that defense set. Still five minutes to play, so a quick score here by Bookdale could uh, really make a difference in things. No, absolutely, and obviously, uh, you know, with Dallas out of the game, we saw some missteps. We saw a fumbled snap. We saw running back fumble the ball. So. You know, even with what, as well as they've been doing, you, you get this to be a seven-point game, you never know. You know, you, you, you know, Harding fell victim a couple times last year to uh, onside kicks. Yep. And so, very important. Obviously, this has got to be four-down territory. Three's not going to do it for them. Uh, so, the defense knows what they got to do. It's not going to be a three and out. They're going to have to defend for four plays. Get them off the field. Get your offense back on the field. Wrap the game up. So Harding on their second timeout of the half. They are actually looks like their first timeout. They just took them down to two. Their first timeout of the half. They still have two remaining. Discussing their defensive options as Stevie Diamond brings his book to Griffin offense back out on the field for a second and 16 from the 21-yard line. They need to get it down to the Harding five for a first down. Watch the middle there. Again, you got three receivers on this left side, including Marcel Boyce Jr. And he has been, especially lately, the favorite target of Stevie Diamond. Diamond back, and he's looking to the other sideline, looking at that far corner. And they're going to call, call him again the down appearance. there with the hands on him. It's going to, a second and 16, that's going to take him, it's going to give him a first down, a 15 yard penalty. Looking for Demetrius Coates over there in the corner. Now they had trips here to the to the near side, single receiver up top there. I saw there was a safety to the high side. Not sure if maybe the corner thought that he was going to get some help from that safety over the top. We're going to move this. Uh, looks like half the distance to the goal up to about the 11-yard line where it's going to be second down in about six. So they did not get the automatic first down. They got the yardage. And Coates with the handoff to Hill. 
Hill trying to get around that corner. He's and gonna get in. Justin Hill is going to take it in for a touchdown. And Akron Buchtel, with 4.49 to play, is back in the ball game. Well, it's not over until it's over. Couple penalties kept this drive alive. Buchtel was able to take advantage of it, showing a lot of heart here. Didn't see a lot of spark from them in the first three quarters, but getting down here to the mid fourth quarter, put together a nice drive, aided by some uh, pass interference penalties, but they're right back in the game here. Looks like Buchtel's gonna set up for two. You see the ambulance in there, some sort of uh, medical happenings going on in the band area, so hopefully everything's okay down there. Actually, they're gonna go, they're bringing in Duvall for the extra point. They're gonna go for one, trying to make it a one touchdown ball game. Duvall's kick is up and it is good. And with 4.49 to play, your Harding Raiders 14, the Akron Buchtel Griffin seven. You go, go back to the first quarter, Tom. Talk about that bad snap on the extra point. That's gonna loom large right here. Also, that that, mi that missed field goal left four points on the uh, on the uh, out there on the field. You get those four points, this game's over. With 4:49 to play, the uh, kickoff return team for Harding is gonna have to be on its toes. We'll see if they put the good hands people out there up front. Yeah, you got to be ready for anything right now. Um, you know, as we said a few minutes ago, last year the uh, Raiders fell victim to a couple onside kicks uh, that really turned some games around uh, for the opposition for them. So you expect them to have that hands team out there, everybody ready to recover the ball and fall on it, get a couple first downs and try to get out of here with the uh, home victory. And Buchtel still a two timeout, so if they can get the ball back, they have time. And in the last couple of drives, they've shown that they can move the ball if they get the ball in the hands of somebody like uh, Marcel Boyce, who has breakaway speed, the big tall receivers out there. No, absolutely. You, you, I mean, first, first priorities, recovering this kick, getting the offense out there on the field. And they're gonna opt to kick it off, kind of a little pooch kick down it's to 20 yards. Takes a bad bounce. And that is picked up and covered. The tempers are flaring down there a little bit. Oh no, without a doubt. I mean, Buchnell's got, they, they, they got life again. Yes, they do. You know, they feel like the game just started. Harding feels like there's 445 left in the fourth quarter. You know, obviously that momentum's on Buchtel's side right now, up to Harding right now to bear down. Starts, like I've, like I've said a hundred times, starts up front with the offensive line. Devin Boss on that kickoff, doing a nice job. That took a really awkward bounce and getting control of that ball, making sure Harding retains possession. That ball could have gone, uh, that could have gone either way right there. It took a really uh, weird bounce at the end of that pooch kick. Well, weird, weird bounce. I mean, it was one of those in-between kicks right there. One of those ones you really want to watch the films, see what the kicker's distance is, so you can catch that ball in the air cleanly. Kind of like that little drop shot in tennis. Yeah. Had there. Well, Drew looks McCowan. Like a short game in golf. Yep. McCowan out to Jones. Jones misses, makes one guy miss. Jones out to the 34-yard line. That's a first and 10, and that is just where Harding needed to start this drive. Absolutely. Booknell was sitting back there waiting for the run, thinking that Harding was just going to try to grind that clock out. Drew was able to step back, two-step drop, find his receiver out there, made a couple guys miss, used his athleticism to get up the field, and most importantly, stayed in bounds. And all of a sudden, it's become the Drew McCowan, Najee Jones show out there. That's three receptions, three connections between those two in these last couple of drives. And it is first and 10 at the 35 yard line for Warren Harding. Gonna run that clock down, listening to the officials. He's gonna give him a count from 10. To give us to Ryan Powell. 
And Powell is not, he might, he's gonna fall ahead for maybe one on that play to make it second and nine, but it does keep the clock running. Now we are under four minutes to play. This is where McCown's got to be the leader in that huddle. He's got to be talking to his guys. He's got to be telling them, you got to dig down deep. I know you're tired. I know you're hurting. But this is what we this is what we practice for. This is what we put the hours in for, for this time right now. Second down and nine. Clock approaching three minutes is off the ball game. 310 and counting. McCowan has Ryan Powell. And I think we took a little bit too much time on that play. That's going to back the Raiders up five yards, make it second down and 14. And, and more importantly, that stops the clock for right, Acker Bookdel. Right. Well, we had talked before, because of the construction going on, they took out the play clocks from each end of the field. I can tell you in the lower levels, when they're, when they're playing at lesser fields than this, generally speaking, the, the, the official will start a countdown from 10, and then he'll start it again at 5, just to give the quarterback an idea. Not sure if Drew got caught up there, but got to keep the head in the game. Cow is going to keep it. He's got some room around that end. He picks up the positive yardage and keeps the ball in bounds. Picks up about five, makes it third down and nine, but he keeps it in bounds. Clock is running, and Griffins are going to be forced to use a timeout here with about 231 to play. That might have only been a five-yard pickup, but that was a, a nice call for Drew McCowan right there, and he keeps the ball in play, in bounds, forces the Griffins to use one of their two remaining timeouts. Yeah, got him around the corner there, something they were not expecting to see. More of that, that's more of the uh, Dallas Jet type of offense there. Got him around the corner, but like you said, most importantly, stayed in bounds, gave him a more reasonable third and nine here. Now the question is, are we gonna get aggressive? Or are we gonna go for this first down? Are we satisfied with just turning around, handing it off, and making Bucknell, Bucknell uh, burn their last time out? Two thirty-one to play. Two thirty-one left in the ball game. Harding on top, fourteen-seven. They've got a third down and nine coming up. Book to close the gap on their last possession. Made it a 14-7 ball game. Drew McCowan has been in in relief of Dallas Chet. Dallas Chet out with an injury earlier in the game. He appears to be okay, but uh, precautionary measures. He's not coming back tonight. See the corners are playing up. Corners have come up now. And McCowan over the middle. He's got Jones again for a first down. Drew McCowan to Najee Jones. First down, out to the 49-yard line. Like you said, the Drew McCown, Najee Jones show. Hit that nice slant there. He had a little sliver of uh, light there. Drew was able to zip it into him, put it right on his numbers. Receiver did his job, made his catch, got upfield. Going to be a first down with 2.25 left to go. And give Drew McCown a lot of credit. He comes in. Late in the ball game for, for Dallas Jet. Teams kind of riding on Dallas Jet. There's, a, there's an obvious, a little bit of deflation out there when Jet went down. Fumbles on the first two plays for, for McCowan under, the, under when he's up there to guide the offense. Now he's come back the last two series. McCowan has kind of taken over, and it looks like he's taking a little bit of charge out there, and he's really, really doing a nice job for the Raiders trying to close this game out. You know, I'd love to tell you I taught him all that when he was six <laughs> years old and I was coaching him in flag football, but I tell you, he, he, I, I see him out there. He's got he's got an amazing family. His father's out there working with him, his coaching staff, uh, all the all the uh, confidence in the world with him. Uh, we hate to say next man up, but it is sports. And uh, Drew's been able to come out here thus far. He's been able to lead this team. See if he can get it, run another 225 off the clock. Start looking forward to next week. That, that first down off third and nine was absolutely huge for the Harding Raiders. And in addition to the clock running down, it gets the ball out away from their goal line a little bit further. 
But at this point, you just hold on to the ball. Akron's going to be trying to stri strip at that ball. We like to see those hard runs. We like to see those extra yards after contact. Right now, secure the ball, go down inbounds. We approach a two-minute mark. McCowell's going to keep it, and he's got room around the end again. This time he gets out of bounds, but he does pick up five yards on that first down play. Controlling the ball, makes it second down and five from the Bookdale 46-yard line. It's going to bring him down under a minute here. Minute 55 left in the game. That's going to give him a... Uh, about a second and what? About a second and six, it looks like. Second and five. Use that wide side of the field so you can stay in bounds. Give him a lead blocker over there. Just keep on inching the ball up the field. Ryan Powell sets up right behind Drew McCowan. And this time they give us to Powell. Powell finds some room up the middle and pulls ahead. Looks like he's going to pick up another Raider first down. Akron's going to use their last timeout, I assume, on that play there. Clock will stop when they move the chains. They may wait a play for that. But they're going to pick up the pick up the countdown here in a moment. It, it's going now, down to about a minute 35 to play. Not really sure what Akron's holding on to that timeout for, but I'm not on their sideline. And once again, you see Ryan Powell right there behind Drew McCowan. Najee Jones, whom McCowan has targeted a handful of times. And again, they give us to Powell. Powell bounces it out to the left. There's flags coming in. Powell picks up a couple. The call is holding. Holding going to go against the Raiders. It's going to move the ball back and stop the clock for the Griffins. Yeah, but it's going to remain first down with a minute seven left. They've only got one timeout. <coughs> 107 to play. Harding hanging on to a 14-7 lead. I think Bucknell would have been better to take the play rather than the penalty to make it second down. Yeah, I think they're going to No, they're going to take the penalty and it'll remain first down. Once again, I'm not on their sideline. Harding on top by a pair of touchdowns coming from coming off the legs of Ryan Powell and Dallas Jet. Jet unfortunately suffered an injury in the third quarter when his Helmet was torn off his head, and it looked like he might have uh, taken a shot to the head, but he's been up and around and throwing. He looks like looks to be in good health, but uh, coaches are keeping him out just to be careful. Drew McCowan has come in, and he has righted the ship, and there's Ryan Powell. Powell with a big run back up inside the 40-yard line. Gets all that penalty yardage back. And the Griffins looks like they are going to take their last time out with 57 seconds of play and Harding on top. 14-7. to seven. That's going to be second down and nine for the Raiders once we get back on the field here. You watch this replay here. Big, powerful run by the big running back. You see him right here. One little juke move and just took, takes number four and puts him on his backside. Other than the one or two times that Powell got stacked up in the line of scrimmage, if he got past the line of scrimmage, he wasn't being stopped on that first hit. There was there was more yards coming after that first hit anytime he got ahead of steam going. Oh, he's absolutely a load to bring down. And you know, one of the things that I really like to see out of this uh, those Raider running backs is all north and south running. All north and south. That's discipline. This isn't this isn't uh, midget league football anymore. You're not gonna be able to beat everybody to the outside. You've gotta be able to lower your pad level, deliver that blow, and sometimes take that three, four yard run. But sometimes that three, four yard run is what opens up the big ones. Because trust me, you start lowering that pad level, you start putting the hits on those linebackers, all of a sudden you start seeing arm tackles and shirt tackles. Late in the fourth quarter, I'm gonna assume, unfortunately we don't have stats up here, I'm gonna assume he's gotta have about 20, 23 carries thus far, running just as strong as he did in the first quarter as he is with a minute left in the fourth quarter. 
And again, Drew McCowan in for the injured Dallas Jet after a shaky start has really righted himself and done a fine job these last couple series. Had a couple nice runs around the end to, to get some positive yards. Has developed a real connection with Najee Jones out there. A couple of very timely pass completions out there to keep Raider drives going. And now it appears that Bryce, uh, Ryan, sorry, Ryan Powell is back in gear. And it looks like uh, Harding is going to take a knee. They're running the rest of this clock out. So obviously it's good to get the win. Uh, we'll wait to find out what uh, the extent of uh, Dallas Jets injuries are. Obviously a positive sign seeing him on the sideline, tossing the ball around, looked like he had a smile on his face. Uh, hopefully it was just something where kind of got bumped up when he got that helmet ripped off of him there. But in the end, second string quarterback, Drew McCown was able to step up here junior lead this team to a victory opening game great game great win for the team great win for the fans and the clock is counting down there's the fireworks three two one and there's your final score your harding raiders 14 akron Bookto griffins seven harding goes to one and one on the air they'll be home again next week with hudson coming to town and we'll be on We'll be streaming that one live, too. Not always pretty at times, but Harding with a dominant showing up front. Running game looks strong. Yeah, overall, I think they're making up. Like we said in the beginning of the game, Tom, uh, Harding couldn't wait to get back on the field. Disappointing loss last week to Medina. Uh, knew they were a better team than what they put out on the field last week. Wanted to get back out here, prove to themselves, prove to the fans, you know, that this was a team that's got a chance. And what you saw tonight, uh, I saw that they changed the defense up. Last week they were running that 3-3-5. This week it looked like they were running a traditional 4-3 defense. A lot of things that we saw last year helped them this year with that defense, being able to get good pressure by the front four, being able to drop back uh, the remaining players on the defense, get to those passing lanes, a lot of opportunities for interceptions. I think we did come up with one interception uh, as a result of that. But just overall, from the offensive side, the offensive line, from the onset, taking control of the game, establishing that line of scrimmage, uh, Powell being able to run strong behind him, Dallas Jet running strong behind him, a slew of running backs running behind him, Finding those open receivers with the cushion that was given, they were able to put together a complete game. We, 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 we fixed some of those mistakes that we saw there on special teams. This looks like they've got a good chance going forward, but just day and night from what we saw last week to what we saw this week, the coaching staff, the players, all the credit to them for being able to correct the mistakes from last week, come home, get that victory, move on next week to a tough Hudson team. Hudson always strong, usually a very offensive-minded team. They will be in town next weekend. And once again, your final score from Mullenkoff, Harding Raiders pick up their first win of the season, defeating the Akron Bookdale Griffins 14 to seven. And Eddie, always a pleasure. Hey, it's we'll great do to, this again next week. Great to be back in the booth. Great to see everybody here at the stadium. Have a great weekend, Raider Nation. We'll see you next Friday.